All right, again, good morning, everyone. Let me just remind everyone uh, about um, our uh, YouTube uh, streaming. We're actually live on YouTube as we speak right now. So welcome, welcome. Good morning, guys. Um, our schedule um, is 9 a.m. However, we are waiting for important um, persons in this event. So let's just wait for at least 10 minutes. All right, so just relax and uh, let's feel the beauty of uh, today's webinar. So let's just wait for at least 10 minutes. Or we're going to start at exactly 9 at 10 a.m. All right. Thank you so much, everyone.
All right, everyone, in two minutes, we are about to start our international webinar for today. So stand by in two minutes. We're going to start, guys. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. I welcome everybody to our international webinar on sports medicine with the theme, Latest Techniques and Strategies in Sports Medicine. Brought to you by the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated in collaboration with Southern Luzon State University, College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, Batanga State University, JP LPC Malvar Campus, College of Teacher Education, and Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, College of Teacher Education. This is your hashtag, Super Energetic Host, MJ. I will be with you for this awesome seminar for today's session. I welcome everybody, especially to our dear participants watching or streaming now live on YouTube. Hello, guys. And to our dear participants here at our Zoom platform. So welcome, welcome, everyone. And to begin with, let me just have a very few reminders before we get started. I'd like to remind everyone that uh, you, uh, especially the participants watching now at YouTube, to make sure that when you receive the link for the attendance, uh, make sure to have your name spelled out correctly and your email as well. So you will receive your uh, certificates or e-certificates. All right. So to begin with, let us now feel the presence of our dear Almighty Creator. Let's have our opening prayer and to be followed uh, uh, with the singing of the Thailand uh, National Anthem and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem.
พงชาติและเพลงชาติไทยเป็นสัญ,ญลักษณ์ของความเป็นไทยเราจงร่วมใจยืนตรงเคารพธงชาติด้วยความภาคภูมิใจในเอกราชและความเสียสละของบรรพบุรุษไทยProfessor Sonia Abastan, Toje P. 
Toje D. Pani, Pani Pan and Mary Jenny Panini Pace. So these all are very renowned personalities in the field of physical education and sports. Uh, they are over this uh, conference. Uh, without much delay, I am expressing few words regarding this sports medicine. Actually, the terminology of sports medicine is itself a uh, um, uh, changing concept. In the traditional concept, we are using this terminology as uh, sports medicine. Now, in the modern concept, most of the countries are now using sports exercise medicine. So the concept is changing. The ideas are changing. Before that, uh, in the traditional aspect, we are uh, the sports medicine specialists are concerned with the um, uh, preventive and curative aspects of an athlete. But nowadays, the sports medicine, the sphere of sports medicine is gradually creeping in a large extent. For performance in a, uh, in a in an international event, the role of sports medicine cannot be ignored. Depending upon the sports medicine principles, sports medicine rules and uh, regulations, and their, the athlete can be prepared. There is no acceptable definitions of sports medicine is there, which is accepted by everybody. But the main areas of sports medicine is the management of the medical problems of exercising individuals. Then pathophysiology, biomechanics, and optimization of human performance. Then the use of exercise as a therapeutic modality in the treatment and preventing disease. And the promotion of health and prevention of disease or injury at a pop uh, population level. So these are the four um, definition can be incorporated and with the help of these four uh, areas and definition of use, one definition can be drawn out. That is the branch of medicine that deals with injury and illness resulting from participation in sports and athletic activities. It deals with the athlete and his environment, prophylactic healthcare and rehabilitative purpose. So these are the areas. The goal and aim of sports medicine is to maintain, sustain, and at times to regain peak physical fitness, that is the adaptability to stress. It may be physical or it may be mental. Main function of sports medicine are promoting, educating, formulating, reacting, competitive and therapeutic and rehabilitative in nature. The primary role of the sports medicine physician is competitive sports in the comprehensive health management of the elite athlete to facilitate the optimi optimal performance, the diagnosis and the treatment of injuries, the illness associated with exercise to prevent, to improve athletic performance. So these are the aspects of the sports medicine. And there are four major um, uh, areas of sports medicine are there, that is specialized care of the athlete. The athletes are something different than that of the normal individuals. So some sports medicine, specialized care should be there then enhancing for the uh, performance what we do what an athlete has to do then enhancement the preventive aspect of the injury so that the uh, injury can be prevented body contact game is there athletes try to excel in performance so sometimes they are facing some sort of injury injury is a part of a athletic career so you have to minimize the um, chances of the injury so this is also an important as, uh, aspect and the betterment of the treatment. So these are all as areas of sports medicine uh, and um, uh, rehabilitation part is also there. Besides these all parts, there is one more important aspect, which is now emerging topics after Ben Johnson in the Olympic event. That is the doping. Athletes and coaches are trying to excel in the performance. And sometimes they are using some sort of drugs or cannabinoids with the help of these drugs and cannabinoid, they are able to perform better in the competitive area, arena, which is in an unfair means. So sports must be free. The philosophy of sports from the Olympic ethics, uh, it should be fair and unfair means. But if we are taking the drugs, if the athletes are taking the drugs and with the help of the drugs, they are able to ele elevate their performance level beyond their capacity. That, and in the long run, they may face the consequence of the health hazards. We know the lifespan of Jackie Joyner Karsi, Florence Gibbett Joyner, those who are the record holder of USA in the Olympic arena, 100 and 200 million, that their record is still working, their record is unbreakable, still till date. So 
doping is a major concern in this area also. So all these areas, all these relevant fields are there in the sports medicine. It's a burning topic nowadays. So I hope this uh, conference will be a grand success. And the, those who are resource person working over here, they are, we are uh, eagerly waiting to uh, listen from him, from their innovative talks, their latest concept. And with the help of this, uh, their information, we are gaining the knowledge and we are able to impart this knowledge in our athletes. Thank you very much. With these words, I may conclude. Thanks a lot. Wow, that was really a very informative inaugural speech. Thank you so much, Dr. Kishore. I know for sure all the participants now are all excited to hear our speakers because of your inaugural speech. Thank you, Doc. And this time, let us move forward to the next part of our inaugural uh, program. We have our very active and dynamic member of it, the International Advisory Board, International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. I am pertaining to our very supportive Professor Faisal Fayaz. Good morning to all of you. I'm audible. Yes, we can Good hear morning. you. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. First of all, uh, I welcome to all of you who are basically with us in this uh, international webinar on sports medicine. So International Association of Physical Education and Sports welcomes to all of you in this international webinar on sports medicine. The whole credit goes to plan and organize all this international webinar on sports medicine to Professor Johnson Santos, President International Association of Physical Education and Sports, and my dear friend, Dr. Kishore who is serving as a organizing secretary of this international webinar. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to be able to welcome those of you that have been with us for a long time now, as well as those who are new. Today, international webinar on sports medicine, which having theme of latest techniques and strategies in sports medicine, and we, International Association of Physical Education and Sports, are proud to be able to host it today here at this wonderful place with all of you it virtually virtually we are basically uh, presenting this webinar this international webinar on sports medicine is being organized by international association of physical education and sports in collaboration with southern Luzon state university college of teacher education institute of human kinetics bentaga states university malware campus College of Teacher Education, Legnoa State Polytechnic State University, Los Banos Campus, College of Teacher Education. International Association of Physical Education Sports is grateful to all of the partners and welcome to all of them in this international webinar on sports medicine. So I want to highlight some of the features and benefits of sports medicine. Sports medicine, it is also called sports and exercise medicine. It is a medical specialty that deals with all the treatment and prevention of injuries related to sports and fitness. Healthcare professionals who work in this interdisciplinary medical field focus not only treating sports related injury, but also on, on injury prevention, rehabilitation, nutrition, and perform, performance training in order to help athletes improve their game. As my friend Dr. Kishore also highlighted that doping is also the part of this thing. And you know very well that the natural ingredients in our food and the basically as a medicine and some extra usage of this, it's come in the category of your doping. So in Olympics, it is being uh, dealt with equal and with natural uh, balance, natural balance way so that each and every perform and deliver the things in a natural way. A sports medicine specialty team often involve physicians who are trained, who are basically trained in sports medicine as well as orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, trainers, coaches, and others as well. So sports medicine is the field of futuristic sports world. The team work together to help patients get back into playing shape as safely as quickly as possible. Academic medical centers often maintain academic research department that conduct research and clinical trials. So in this way, the sports medicine department basically uh, put the focus on this thing that how 
by how basically mechanically and uh, how the things can be the injury uh, prevention can be basically overcome in the sports field as well so sports me sports medicine is an area of medical practice concerned with the treatment of injuries resulting from athletic activities a physician pra practicing sports medicine focuses on sports related medical services sports medicine focuses on helping people improve their athletic performance recover from injury and prevent future injuries so this is the main thing of sports medicine it is a fast growing healthcare field because health workers who specialize in sports medicine help all kinds of people not just athletes so there are some complex injuries which a normal doctor cannot judge uh, in a basic at the basically normal level so medical medicine profession play a key and proactive role in preventing injuries on several on several levels one of our vital function is in the coordination and implementation of pre participation screening examination and evaluation of athletes the goal of sports medicine is to maintain sustain and at times to regain peak physical fitness that is adaptability adapt adaptability to stress physical and mental main function of sports medicine are promotive educative formative recreative competitive therapeutic and rehabilitative in nature a sports medicine physician can educate you on how to prepare properly for exercise or a particular sport which can help to reduce the risk of injury it also helps you to work specifically on biomechanics so that you can basically at a lighter way you can improve your performance and you can deliver your exercises at a normal level they may focus on strengthening specific areas of the body that may be vulnerable when playing a sports this will stabilize and protect the area and prevent injuries with numerous numerous approaches to sports medicine uh, different kinds of sports medicine program have been introduced in the world the collection of sports medicine and physiotherapy covers major aspects of sports medicine and sports science such as prevention management rehabilitation of sports exercise and physical activity related injuries and occupational problems so if we see the fields of physical sports medicine so physical therapists certified athletic trainers nutritionists they play a major role in this field so in the Uh, the sports medicine uh, importance in the 21st century has become so much important that you cannot basically imagine so it just like it plays a magic pill for a sportsman so that anyone can identify the problem of a sportsman mentally physically psychologically or something else through environmentally as well so not only among professional athletes but also among the general population as well so it's a new medical specialty having emerged as distinct field only in the in this latest 20th century sports medicine has become it's indispensable for athletes with its targeted focus on the unique needs and concern so if we see the major benefits of sports medicine so we can identify different fields different areas as well specialized cares enhance injury and and re injury prevention cutting edge treatment options enhanced athletic performance so this is the major thing through which we gradually improve and get the optimal performance of our athlete reason is this there is one thing is this that we are giving training and the on the other end we are also basically trying to prevent that athlete from the injuries as well so no one can deny the importance of sports medicine in this most competitive sports era of 21st century so thank you very much i welcome to all of you and i'm really grateful to professor julson who basically organized this wonderful webinar for the sports community thank you very much thank you so much as well professor faisal fayaz and yes i agree with you no one nobody could definitely question the importance of the sports medicine right so thank you for that and at this juncture it is with great honor to have our 
uh, ever supportive and hands-on president of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. Uh, he will be giving his welcome address. Let's welcome Associate Professor Dr. Jolson M. Santos. Doc? morning everyone i would like to welcome the following eminent personalities that made this event into reality dr kishore mokopadhyay associate professor union christian training college and a member of the international advisory board of the international association for physical education and sports to professor faisal fayas member of the International Advisory Board of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports. <laughs> Professor Emilita Kada, Head, Institute of Human Kinetics, Southern Luzon State University. To Dr. Marife Magpantay, Dean, College of Teacher Education, Southern Luzon State University. To Dr. Ginaline Luwalhati, Dean, College of Teacher Education, Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar, to Dr. Karen Manaid, Associate Dean, College of Teacher Education, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Baños Campus, to Professor Darwin Ofrin, Director of Sports Development Office, Laguna State Polytechnic University, to the distinguished speakers who will be properly introduced later, Professor Sonia Abustan, Head of Sports, Institute of Human Kinetics, Southern Luzon State University. To Dr. TJ Panganiban, Program Chair, Bachelor of Physical Education Program, Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar. To our country coordinator and our moderator for today's event, Professor Mary Jane Pernites and to all the participants who are watching through the YouTube live. Sports medicine is a branch of medicine that deals with physical fitness and treatment and prevention of injuries related to sports and exercise. I hope that this webinar will be a fruitful one to everyone. Thank you and I welcome you all. That was indeed a very short yet a very meaningful uh, speech uh, from you, Dr. Jolson. Thank you so much for that, Doc. And at this juncture, I am very excited to uh, introduce to you uh, the leaders behind uh, this webinar. So let's have the first one to give her message. She's the head of the Institute of Human Kinetics, Southern Luzon State University, Professor Emilita N. Kada. Prof. Distinguished speakers, participants, and organizers, my warmest greetings to one and all. It really gives me honor and great pleasure to be part of this international we webinar on sports medicine with the team latest techniques and strategies in sports medicine. It is a glorious moment to extend my warm greetings on behalf of the Southern Luzon State University Institute of Human Kinetics. I am confident that this international webinar will be profitable and fruitful for every one of us particularly. At this present time, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected all areas of life, including sports and athletes, which caused disruption to physical and psychological well-being, leading to health impairment and loss of performance. The role that sports play in this pandemic is necessary and has great impact on every aspect of our lives. We must all do our part to keep each other safe and the sports medicine practitioner all over the world need to adapt to the new challenges. We understand and more than ever than ever that sports keep our body and mind healthy and bring us together. We are confident 
we will return to play sports. Let us hold hands together as we continue as far for that. Again, my warmest greetings to all. Thank you and good day. All right, thank you so much for that, Professor Kada. And this time, we're going to hear a few words from the Dean of College of Teacher Education, Southern Luzon State University, mm -hmm. Dr. Marve S. Magpantai. Doc? A pleasant morning to everyone. So uh, we are truly blessed that in spite of this pandemic, uh, we are able to join hands to uphold teaching quality and embrace excellence through this virtual professional learning endeavor. It is very timely because many of us are suffering from anxiety. May this webinar serve as enlightenment to each and everyone that health is well and through sports, especially indoor sports, because many of us were locked in our respective homes we can manage and overcome this stress that we are exper experiencing due to COVID-19. Cheers to everyone and congratulations to the organizers of this webinar on sports medicine. Thank you, my, thank you very much and mabuhay tayong lahat. Yes, mabuhay tayong lahat, Doc. And thank you so much for that very um inspiring. I, I must say inspiring because it's very timely. And I agree with you. I couldn't agree more uh, with what she mentioned earlier that this time that we're facing pandemic, we all need to have this kind of webinar. And it's really a great privilege to be part of this webinar. Thank you, Doc, for that. And this time, let's move on to our next leader. Um. Yeah, the early bird for this webinar. Let's welcome the Dean of College of Teacher Education, Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar, Dr. Janelyn P. Luwalhate. Doc? Hi, good morning. Thank you so much, Professor MJ. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Okay, so uh, to all that, Technical Working Committee and members of the IFS, to the three distinguished uh, resource persons to be introduced later, to all the participants and the faculty members, a pleasant morning to all of us. First, um, I want to express my sincerest gratitude to the International Association for Physical Education and Sports Incorporated for bringing together three universities uh, in the region in an academic collaboration like this. So uh, this morning, we will be having an international webinar on sports medicine, which is a very timely, most especially we are now uh, facing a uh, pandemic. Uh, what else? Truly, we are blessed uh, because uh, IFS serves as an instrument for strengthening our networks of uh, brotherhood. Imagine in one webinar, uh, we have three state universities and it really made me overwhelmed. Thank you so much, IFS. And I hope this is just the beginning of our collaboration. And uh, with God's grace, I hope we can come up with other uh, activities aside from webinars. And um, with our similar mission, I am positive that we can achieve our goals in providing technical assistance to all professionals worldwide. So let us continue to inspire everyone to better perform our role in the society. So what, once again, thank you. Uh, good morning and God bless us all. Good morning as well, Dr. Chen. And Dr. Chen, yes, you are absolutely right. It is really overwhelming. Me as well, I'm overwhelmed. This is my first time ever to have a virtual, you know, um, webinar, hosting a virtual webinar with this very big, I mean, range of participants. And uh, imagine three, right? <laughs> three big universities in one webinar. That was really awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Chen. At this juncture, let us also welcome our next hands-on leader. There you go. Uh, she is the Associate Dean of College of Teacher Education from Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, Dr. Karen A. Manai. Doc? Hello, good morning. Thank you so much, Ms. MJ. Um, to Dr. Mario R. Briones, LSPU President, LSPU Key Officials, 
Dr. Darwin Oprin, LSPU Director of Sports Development of LSPU, Dr. Jewelson Santos, the President of IAPES, to Dr. Mario Dijito, the Principal of Masolog National High School, Canlaon City, Negros Oriental, together with his faculty members in the physical education, to our collaborators from Southern Luzon State University and Batanga State University, distinguished guests, experts in sports medicines, ladies and gentlemen, good morning from the Philippines, Mabuhay. I am so delighted that today we are conducting the international webinar on sports medicine through the collaboration of the International Association on Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Southern Luzon State University, Batanga State University, and us, Laguna State Polytechnic University, with the theme, Latest Techniques and Strategies in Sports Medicine, which is very timely and relevant. Aside from this, um, this also champions two of the values sports teaches all of us, camaraderie and teamwork. These are fosters are coming together for a common noble purpose, and we appreciate these efforts, especially at this most challenging time, that this exciting venture happens in front of our screens instead of a full-packed gymnasium or auditorium. To the participants, this is your opportune time to hear from the experts in sports medicine, wherein you will be provided with all the needed knowledge and skills on how you will manage yourself, your athletes to improve their performance and recover from injuries, as well as on how to prevent future injuries. True enough that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. In sports, safety should always be the priority. To the organizers, speakers, collaborators, also to Dr. Mario Dijito for his endless support to the CTE Extension Program, to my dear colleagues in the academe, my warmest felicitations on the success of this academic endeavor. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Wow, I love the energy, Doc. <laughs> Thank you so much as well for that very warm welcome and warm introduction. Um, we really appreciate that. And now let us move on to the last, but of course not the least, uh, the Director of the Sports Development Office, Laguna State Polytechnic University System. We have Professor Darwin Ofrin. Bra? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor MJ. So first of all, I would like to congratulate and express my deepest appreciation to the organizer of this international webinar on sports medicine. To the Southern Luzon State University College of Teacher Education headed by University President Dr. Dorasi Soleta Nantes. To the Badang Batangas State University College of Teacher Education headed by University President Dr. Tirso Ronquillo and the Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, College of Teacher Education with our university and dynamic president, Dr. Mario R. Briones. And to the International Association on Physical Education in Sports Incorporated, headed by President Dr. Jewelson Santos, to Dr. Kishor, Mukopadhai, the Associate Professor, Union Christian Training College, to Dr. Maripe Magpantay, Dean, College of Teacher Education, SLSU, to Professor Emilita Kada, Head, Institute of Human Kinetic, SLSU, Dr. Jeneline Lualhati, Dean, College of Teacher Education, Batangas State University, Malbar Campus. Of course, to our dear Associate Dean of College Teacher Education, LSPU, Los Banos Campus, Dr. Karen Maneig. To our esteemed uh, resource speaker, Dr. Lim Boyn Hoy, Dr. Gary Kwan, and Dr. Manabendra Batakaria. And of course, to my 
uh, co-sports director from the Southern Luzon State University, Professor Sonia Abustan, and Dr. TJ Panganiban, the program uh, chairperson, BPE program of the Patangas State University. And of course, to our beautiful moderator, Professor Mary Jane Pernites, to all coaches, trainers, our student athletes, PE teachers, and sports enthusiasts, a pleasant and blessed morning to everyone. Truly, I'm so delighted to be part of this international webinar. And before I deliver my message, allow me to raise two questions that later can be answered in this webinar. What is the powerful impact that physical education and sports can have in our lives, in our kids, and, in, and to our students? What is the real importance of physical education and sports to the growth and development of our student athletes? And how, how we can prevent injuries related to sports and science exercise? So at this moment, we are very fortunate. Our distinguished resource speaker will share to us their expertise on the latest techniques and strategies in sports medicine. We know that physical education in sports are integral part of education for any country at any point of time. And we are mandated to develop a framework of action of action plan for the promotion and development of our student athletes. Physical education in sports also provide an opportunity to learn skills, discipline, confidence, leadership, and convey core principles that are important in democracies such as tolerance, cooperation, and respect. We, as coaches, trainer, and PE teachers, must teach the fundamental values of effort on how to manage essential steps in life, such as victory and defeat. In addition, the physical education in sports should contribute to the economic and social growth, improve public health, and bring different communities together. This also promotes a long-lasting positive impact and development to public health of the community. In order to formulate and develop a comprehensive and well-adjusted sports program, which is the essential complement to the basic program of instruction in all levels of education, primary, secondary, and tertiary, the inclusion of sports medicine must be integrated to the sports program that deals with physical fitness, treatment, and prevention of injuries related to sports and exercises. I want to leave you with a quote that Penny Chenery had to say, we will win if we can and live with if we can. But you never know how far you can go unless you run. You have to run your race. I don't care how many times they say it can be done. I will not live the rest of my life in regret. And no matter what happens, we are going to live rejoicing every day. And to everyone present in this webinar, I want you to run your own race to find your own destiny of success. And all of us, we can do our part simply by starting with three single words. I love sports. Again, thank you and God bless. Wow, I love sports. Yes, Doc. And I also love my participant for giving me that very, very good adjective, beautiful moderator. So you're now my favorite. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so Professor Darwin, thank you so much for that inspiring message. And I know all of us are excited, especially to the sports enthusiasts watching now live on YouTube. Hello there, guys. How are you doing? I hope everyone's doing great and excited. So now, without further ado, let us have our first speaker. And I'll be introducing you our first distinguished speaker for this international webinar. Um, he is a senior lecturer of Sports Center, University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. He also earned his doctorate degree in sports science from University of Malaya. And he's an expert in sports psychology and sports training. With so much privilege and honor, I welcome 
Associate Professor Dr. Lim Wun Hui. Doc? Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you well, Doc. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you very much. I think uh, in, in the sports medicine area, I think uh, if, if the patient look at the smiling face and beautiful like the moderator, I think the recovery already 50% down. <laughs> so no need to say any single word. That, that's it. You look at the beautiful face. That's why now uh, our psychological is so important in uh, sports action, yeah? <laughs> All right, now, can I present now? Yes, Doc, you definitely can uh, share your screen now. Thank yeah. you. Can, can I, can you see that? Can you see that? Yes, we can see your colorful PowerPoint presentation that really yeah. capture our attention. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much the uh, three university that uh, co-organized this event, the international webinar on sports medicine. So because when uh, when I was contacted about this uh, webinar, I was like, "Wow, this is sports medicine. It's not really my area, but." Uh, uh, somehow, I think the organizers, uh, you know, invited two, uh, what do you call that, uh, two uh, speakers. It's actually in the sports psychology area. I think must be a particular reason, you know. When, when I ask myself, hey, why Dr. Gary is here and then myself also here. And this is talking about sports medicine. It's something like, hey, oh, then I realized one thing. <laughs> I can assure that sports medicine now, he said the part and parcel also, they have to embed the sports psychology in the treatment of the athlete. So I think sports psychology, that's why I think today is basically we are talking about sports psychology yet in the sport medicine's area. <laughs> so with, with that, I say thank you very much once again. And, all that. and then uh, also this talk is actually based on my experience. I've been teaching uh, my, my class for the master's those are medical doctors. Uh, they are compulsory taking this subject for my sports psych psychology. Uh, they are actually taking, uh, pursuing their masters in sports medicine in my university. So that uh, one of the subject is actually uh, my subject is actually sports psychology. So I'm the one actually guiding them. And then every time when I ask the medical doctor, all right, uh, anybody injured and all that, the first treatment. You know, the, the pri primary for the sports medicine is what? They don't even look at sports psychology. The more one is they prescribe medication uh, so that the athlete will be, you know, what they want is actually to recover as soon as possible. So that, that is what they, they, you know, in the sports medicine. So today we are going to talk about something like sports psychology and better to actually you know, helping this athlete to recover faster. Okay, so this is a topic of my talk. Is actually uh, on the relaxation because anybody want to recover faster. I think the most important thing is you know relaxation skills in all that. So if anybody want to keep in touch with me, by all means, I'm actually attached with University of Malaya. So I think I, I'm proud to announce that Unity Malaya is actually at the world ranking when the world met of 59. So uh, anybody want to pursue and all that, uh, by all means. Yeah. So this, this is my topic, I, I make it simplified so that everybody can understand easy. So the, uh, the content of uh, the, the outline is actually, I'm talking about that. I introduced a little bit in terms of, you know, what is, uh, you know, relaxation skills and after that, uh, I'll discuss also related to whichever the injured athlete, what is their psychological skill and what is the responses that they have that you can use to help this athlete. And uh, uh, a lot of people talking about that, there are five stages of grief means like when the athlete, you know, when they get injured, what is the feeling? What is the thinking? How did also be actually you know, borrow these uh, five stages of the grief that into this, the feeling of that injured athlete, yeah? And after that, uh, I'm going to talk about the relaxation skill for the injured athlete. Why is it so important when people get injured? Why relaxation skill is so important? There, there are so many kinds of relaxation skill, but uh, 
Uh, today, what I'm going to do is actually uh, I'm going to share with you something like I uh, invented uh, uh, when I was working in the national athlete, so that uh, we, we actually found it. We as as my personal in intellectual property. So that this this thing is now when I presented like that means like it's actually open and then uh, anybody feel that you want to learn about this technique by all means uh, I introduced once uh, in the previous international uh, conference but uh, due to the the weather's and all that it was not really I, I'm not even satisfied to introduce that kind of things you know to the uh, participants so because of the weather and all that but uh, hopefully. Uh, I need to spread this wing to you know other people so that people more and more people are uh, getting this uh, new technique, especially medical doctors and all that, or even our physical education teachers and all that, and uh, maybe the coaches that can help the athlete. So this, these are the outline of my presentation today. Yeah, hopefully, um, maybe if you got any question, uh, maybe you can write down immediately after my talk. Uh, you can ask me or clarify with me because uh, my class is actually waiting so that I need to travel another one and a half hour to my university to teach eh, so that now currently I'm at home actually. <laughs> ah, okay, now introduction, you talk about sport injury. It's actually, it's a nightmare for the athlete. Because why? It, it, it not disturb the career in the, in the success because some people, let's say, example, they have been trained for 10 years, uh, maybe, you know, about 10 years and then they're preparing for a big competition. If the injury take place, that's it. It's the nightmare for them. So the career might be, if even worse, example, let's say this, uh, you know, happen to this professional athlete. Can you imagine that? The professional athlete is actually, they, they based on the income to, you know, to, to, like like uh, go for living is actually everything is is based on the income huh? so that again the, they are professional so if they get injured that mean they cannot play that mean there is no income for them you know very important so an injury does not affect exclusively physical capability but also contextual so the psychological aspect so that uh, we need to take note that you you see people when they get injured or oh, they cannot walk but actually, you can work is only physical part. But the psychological part is the most important. Yeah, so that a lot of people, we are actually overlooked on that part. Yeah. So with that, I think you can see the example. I think uh, anybody, if they like to play badminton, you know that uh, this example I take from Malaysia example. And then uh, Dato Lee Chung Wei, our, uh, at one time was a world champion number one and all that. And then uh, during uh, preparation for the... Uh, because I think whole nation, actually in Malaysia, Malaysia is help, hoping to get one the first gold medal in Olympic. You know, everybody is like hoping at this uh, Lee Chong Wei will, will get the first gold medal. And somehow uh, leading tournament to the Olympic, uh, he was injured. So can you imagine that uh, you can see that uh, highlighted in red color at that the anchor sprain on the right side somewhere. Yeah. So after that, what happened? He had to go for rehab. And then definitely the rehab and all that and all, you know, the, the time disturbed in terms of like, you know, pre realization planning and all that. So that you, you are leading to the Olympic at the end, you get injured. And then, you know, everybody, you've got sprain, uh, ankle sprain before you know, but this is severe uh, ankle sprain. It's not like a, you know, minor one. Again, these are the things happen and all that. So what happened to this is, in fact, some of the in certain situations, the injury can deprive the athlete from compensation increase of the life stress. That means the whole life after that, they always lead to the, the thinking of the, the situation or, or you know that the injury take place, you know, and also determines the fear of re-injury. I think this part is very, very crucial because a lot of people when they got injured at part. They always, they, they are so precaution in terms of prepare. They, they don't want to get injured again at the anchor. So that they, when they play, what happens is actually they don't play in the 100% full force. They're afraid to get the re-injury, the same place again. So again, other places is actually the sensation of the loss. Maybe they, they feel that, oh, yo, I, I cannot perform 100%. That means something is not uh, full 
spec that I have now. So that again, negative emotion, they might miss some of them. If we didn't counsel them well, maybe they go into the always, uh, you know, the mood is bad and then a, a negative emotion, that means instead of they're happy, they, they become ang angry very, very fast. And so all these are previous study also reported the same and all that. Yeah? And other than that, when you look at it, then what are the treatment people give so far? Uh, yeah, when today we are talking about spot medicine, of course it's medication, it cannot run away. So medication are the uh, mainstay of the treatment in the injured athletes. And then of course they, they need to what pain relief and healing property and all that. I think that part, nobody can question that. Uh, spot medicine uh, without medication, <laughs> what else? You know, so uh, flexibility training is also so important component uh, we have in terms of like say you're taking medication because you want to heal as soon as possible. And uh, one of the things is always, uh, you know, medical do is actually flexibility training so that uh, to make sure the person can recover as soon as possible. And also to, to maintain the cardiovascular uh, endurance as well. Some, some people may be you are injured on the arm, but the leg is still working so that the, the cardiovascular, because you see, if you don't maintain the cardiovascular, if let's say the football player or something like that, so what happened is actually, you know, uh, when they back to play, okay, and it, it might having a problem because the, the cardiovascular, maybe you know that, a uh, cardiovascular 48 hours, they might decline slowly and all that. So that you, if you didn't maintain, then you back to play, then it will be a problem as well. You cannot catch up with other players. So these are the things that uh, we need to take to the consideration as well. All right. Next is actually um, oh. other treatments. Uh, restoration of the proper uh, proprioceptions is an important part of the rehabilitation as well. So that it's not only flexibility and proprioception, that's why now a, a lot of rehab, when you go and see uh, sports medicines and all that, uh, after uh, the treatment, comp, they, they, they will send the injured athlete go back to the, and then what they do is like, uh, you know, they, they, will, they will reinstall the proper session, they mean they, they go for the unbalanced kind of ball or something like that, so that the proper session is actually activated so that uh, they can go back to support whatever the athlete in the pre injury. Yeah. So the, the goal of the function based uh, rehabilitation program is to return the athlete to optimum athlete, uh, athletic performance. I think this is so, uh, yeah, it's true because what they, you know, maybe the physiotherapy or whoever, the medical doctors in, in the sports medicine and trying to install whatever the original kind of things that can make sure that at, when they return to play, they will be in, in the optimum performance, like, like pre-injury before. So that is what the goal, I think, uh, but I don't know how, how many percent actually we can achieve. And also, uh, but traditionally main focus of injury rehab has been uh, aspect is actually they focus more on physical aspect. So if you, let's say, example, you got a chance to maybe ask the, you know, example, the physiotherapy, like whichever they, they're doing a recovery or, you know, to, to treat the injured athlete or something like that, how much of percent they apply in terms of uh, sport psychology, uh, maybe the percentage is so low. Uh, so that uh, these, these are the things we talk about. Eh? So the numbers of empirical studies have been confirmed that the psychological aspect of the injured, uh, injury rehabilitation need to be considered as well. So that it's not only physical. So of course the medication comes physical rehab, and also you must take to the consideration. That means it, it becomes a wholesome treatment. It's not only one aspect or two aspects. So a lot of people say, they, they forgot about the psychological, uh, what they call it, aspect in terms of the injured athlete and all that. So that other than that, you can see that the high performance also have a better reaction uh, to the injury, probably because they, they have been more psychological resources to cope with the situation. Example, uh, this, uh, this, this, all the researchers here, they did a study and they found that actually, uh, like example, I give an example, Malaysian athletes just now, uh, Lee Chong Wei, that actually they, they are high performer, they are elite performer in terms of world championship and all that, they, they've gone through all this so that 
in terms of psychological, they are actually having more because they have been working with sports psychology for years and all that. So they themselves actually build up the psychological uh, resources as well. So that to cope with this kind of situation, maybe they know they are better as compared to those who are beginner. Uh, maybe the intermediate uh, athlete or something like that. So these are the things that it might happen. Yeah. So other than that, you can see that as such, the sports maximum professional has an important role to ensuring that the athlete is both physically, psychologically ready to return to the competition. But most of the time, when you go and see doctor, doctor say, ah, you are physically fine. You they did all the isokinetic uh, testing. The strength is okay. Uh, maybe the agility is okay, maybe the cardiovascular, maybe down a little bit, we can, can catch up later. And they always talk about physical performance. <laughs> uh, but uh, here, like when we talk about sports psychology, and then that, that's why we, we must be embedded psychological so that uh, the, the athlete is ready. From, from my experience of working with this uh, you know, athlete and also I'm, I'm teaching these uh, masters in sports medicine students and all that. I realized that uh, most of them, uh, they don't have that kind of They don't know what to do. They dare not do because psychologically, they're afraid that doing apply something wrong uh, to them. So that uh, it, it didn't provide the athlete the insufficiency of, in terms of psychology readiness to return to play. So that is the things that, that's why in uh, UN, uh, when we started uh, with the sports maxim, we actually embedded the course the student must take sports psychology. So that because they are going to treat the uh, athlete as well. So uh, that part is, I think, is quite successful. So psychological uh, skills such as goal setting, injury, relaxation techniques uh, can be decreased injury rehab, rehabilitation time by increasing the actual coping skill and the overall motivation. So that uh, this study also showed that uh, these are the top uh, sports psychological skill that people are using that. Maybe they, uh, later on, as you say, Professor Dr. Gary Kwan will talk about music, maybe also can be, you know, music is also going back to relaxation again. But of course, arousal, there's another part, but uh, here, when you talk about athlete rehabilitation, is always talk about relaxation. So music is play a very important role in terms of we have yeah, in terms of psychology part and also the process of always these are the process is actually gone through by the athlete whoever when when they got injured so one one uh, number one is actually when they're playing after that they get injured of course you need to go for rehab and then also medication and, uh, and then at the end only you you can return to play i think this process uh, everybody have to go through the, the simple process like that then they are they are more detailed other than this. So that uh, this is a big area in terms of that. So what are the responses when the uh, athlete get injured? So of course, uh, most of the athletes will have uh, their feel sad, uh, they feeling isolation. Why the isolation? Because other teammates are still playing, still having a training session. You are lying down in, on the bed. <laughs> you are in the hospital. So, so they kind of things. And then uh, irritation, they, they feel like irritated. They can't move and all that. A lack of motivation. Definitely frustration is is very big chunk in terms of like, frustration. All right? And also anger is always there. And of course, the alteration in, in the appetite also. So because they, they, they cannot eat whatever they wanted and then they uh, sleep disturbance as well. You know, they say people get injured, the pain is always there, disturb them in terms of the, having a good night sleep. And then also the feeling uh, disengaged as well. They, they didn't engage with the other athletes or the coaches or something like that. Uh, maybe they engage with the nurse or engage with the doctor, medical doctor, or something like that. And then also the uh, distress and etc. These, these are the people a study and then they actually reported that yeah i think i think maybe more than that it's not only this this is talking about common responses in terms of the when they athlete get injured all right this is a common but somehow in the psychological responses these are the uh, the psychological distress is the influence the athlete adherent to the rehabilitation protocol because when people get injured, you need to go for rehabilitation. But because of the psychology, they say, ah, I don't want to do feel pain and all that. So that, uh, the, you know, they, they ignore, ignore all these instructions. Some people will go through like that. And then they don't want to adhere to this 
rehabilitation process. These are the biggest problem. So limited uh, adherence to the rehabilitation protocol jeopardize the likelihood of the successful recovery and the place the athlete into the greatest risk of the re-injury and returning a full sport participation. Now, most of the time, and maybe the, the rehab, you know, personal or, or medical teams that tell them, okay, you need to do maybe 10 repetition, maybe they say, you know, you go to anybody who went through the rehab, you know, it's so painful, you know, so that maybe they, they skip, they don't do two or something. Instead of doing three sets, they do two sets or something like that. So that they did a higher to this rehabilitation process. And they, at the end, when they return to play, and because you, you know why, when, when the medical doctor asks the patient or asks the injured athlete, how pain is it? Maybe sometimes pain it is an object, it's a subjective kind of rating so that you, you cannot I cannot tell you 100% I'm paying. What was the rating? Maybe 0 to 5, 0 to 10 or something like this. So that there is only the person know. But sometimes most of the athletes is actually they, they don't rate the, the, the actual one. So they say, because why? The purpose of the risk rehab is very painful, but they, they will tell the you know rehab, maybe tell the medical doctors that eh, I, I got no more pain. But they still pain there, but they don't tell the truth. So at the end, they return to play, then they get the uh, re-injury again. Now, these are the things that uh, you talk about. So most of the time, the athlete may be experience similar psychological reaction, uh, similar to corporal strokes or uh, five stages of grief. And then uh, if someone lost, you know, maybe someone just uh, lost someone loved one or something like that, this is a corporal strokes, they talk about the five stages of grief and then this actually in, in the progression kind of stages and all that. So that these are the five stages of this, the denial, the anger and bargaining and depression and then only accepted. So again, this, this process is very interesting because uh, it's true when you want to give a treatment to the athlete, if the athlete is still in the denial stage, they mean they deny that they actually got injured. So uh, very difficult for all the medical doctors to give them a treatment. So even uh, when there are states of anger, when there are states of bargaining, can I do instead of, uh, can I go back tomorrow and play, they still in the bargaining stage and depression, they said, ah, I don't want to do and all that. So until the process of these uh, five stages of the grief, is actually when the athlete injured athlete, then they say, okay, I need to accept this, whatever you do, make sure that I recover as soon as possible so that I can return to play. So that's it. So that these are the things that the stages, but we can talk about this as well in more detail. But today, my, my focus is not on that. Eh? So the process of this is accepted. When they accept, the process of the treatment is actually number one, the athlete need to accept the injury. So when they accept, they mean, yes, I got sprain, ankle sprain. Now, I, I got knee injury, I got whatever, I need to go for operation, ACL, MCL, whatever operation you talk about, you know, maybe some of them may be having tennis elbow and all that. So, and other than that, the control means like the athlete need to feel that they have some control over the injury instead of, I leave it, leave it the medical to do, but if they know that, okay, I become stronger. If I go to this process, they have to have this kind of process that they've been controlled. So the athlete need to be. And the direction, the most important thing is most of the medical doctor, if they say they are well known with the athlete and all that, they, they give them, most of the medical doctor, whoever treat the SVC goes uh, in, in high or in maybe in this uh, elite athlete. So they, they give them a clear direction in terms of, okay, if they say they need to go for operation. So operation means what? Take what? One, uh, maybe two hours or one hour or something like that. So they, they need to give them a time frame. So the time frame is that after operation, you need to rest, you need to recover, you need to take medication. And then after one week or something like that, you need to go for rehab, you started. Okay, so I assure like uh, most of the medical doctor will tell them, okay, by, by two months after that, uh, if everything we do, uh, we test again, everything, the strength and the muscular endurance, uh, maybe uh, flexibility is back to the you know, initial and then we might release you return to play. So that, that is the direction given to the athlete so that they know 
okay, this process, the rehab, the operation, everything, it might take about two months, three months. Uh, so that uh, these are things like if they say the uh, injured athlete got this direction, the direction given to them, so they, they are more clear, they are more confident, so then they can take uh, whatever things that they need support to do. So this is another thing is assurance means like the medical doctor always assure that, okay, uh, normally from their experience, uh, this will take one month, two months or something at the time, it's like that. Yeah? And then the commitment and the belief so that uh, also, again, we talk about sports psychology, believe that their own healing capability and sport machine team treatment so that uh, whenever the rehab process comes in, so the most important thing is the athlete have to give a commitment to their uh, rehab process protocol. And also they need to believe themselves. If they don't believe I can heal, at the end, the psychological is didn't fulfill the belief again, whatever they do is at the end. And then of course, the, the, the last process will be talking about process of the you know, successful success, uh, return to their children's sport, injured free, and then psychological prepare for that. Uh, but uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time from my experience working with the athlete and all that, when they get injury, they return to play, they always afraid one thing on it, re-injury. Most of the time it's like that. Yeah, from my experience working with the national athlete as well. So what are the things that we can do as a sport psychology? So relaxation skill. So relaxation skill for injured athlete, uh, practicing psychological strategy, including the imagery, including the relaxation, may help the rehabilitation athlete by altering the cognitive pressures and also managing the stretcher and for recovery. So when you practice the imagery and relaxation, that's why uh, the process might be recover faster. And then therefore the promoting optimum healing and timely return to play. Because most of the athletes, when they get injured, the most the first question they ask, when can I return to play? <laughs> so if you work with the athlete, you sure you know. Huh? So the, the first question they will ask, yeah, you cannot run away. That's, uh, so what are the relaxation skill again? And then type of relaxation technique that we including the breathing. So that uh, maybe the you know, maybe the medical team professional they can use actually the relaxation, like example, breathing technique is, is one of them. And there are so many kinds of breathing technique now. Then. And then also you can use that the progressive muscular relaxation as well. PMR is one of the uh, what you call it uh, most uh, frequently people use the PMR, progressive muscular relaxation, also one of the uh, technique, the popular technique in terms of that. Eh? So relaxation technique have been uh, been paired with other mental skills techniques such as imagery, goal setting, and also self talk as well. So the other researcher, the group, they, they found that actually, uh, if let's say you want to use uh, maybe we call it a deep breathing technique, let's say example, but they actually they pair with maybe something when you do deep breathing technique, actually they exhale and then uh, you are actually imagine something like that, you know you recover and then you can go back to play as normal. Or even you can even pair with the goal setting so that uh, when, when I should do this, when I should do that, and by the time three months, I should, you know, I, I can go my, in terms of the testing, you know, let's say example, testing on the muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, I can go back to the optimum level now so that I can return to play as soon as possible. So that is what, uh, they, they don't use it as an isolation. They use it as actually compensate with other uh, technique as well. So these are the very important. Eh? There's people reported and most of the study have been reported as well. So goal setting imagery relaxation techniques have been uh, found to be successful a skill. When working with the athlete recovering from injury, also another study has been shown that and successful psychological intention intervention have helped reduce negative psychological consequences, improve coping strategy, and also reduce the re injury uh, anxiety. They, they are so afraid. They are so afraid. Uh, most of the athletes is actually this one, re-injury. They are so afraid of that. It, especially, they, they are so protect on, on the part that injured just recover and go back to play. So some, some of the athletes are afraid that they, they might be using the bandage, you know, cover the area so that uh, you know, to, to make sure they protect the area. So when you, you bandage and play, it means like you are not, you know, flexibility in terms of muscular strength, you are going to input it into the 100%. That is the, the bad thing about 
you know the consequences of the ten uh, days. So what what we do, what I do is actually the new invention. The, the, this talk I'm, I'm talking about a little bit of a new invention in the relax system technique because I, I like to invent new things to, to share with the athletes, to share with the coaches and all that. So this presentation because this uh, what you call it, this new invention is still. I only presented in one international conference. Uh, so far, there's no, uh, not much I, I presented. So that um, this technique is growing popularity. It's similarly, yeah? it's, a, it's called flotation tank uh, therapy. And a lot of uh, medical doctors are releasing that. And also the, the research in US and Sweden have been demonstrated that a powerful and profound relaxation after 20 minutes. Means like if you're using the flotation tank, and you you lie down for the at the process. The thing that is actually uh, a lot of athletes have been doing the recovery or maybe they increase their focus and all that, uh, especially in the psychological part. Yeah? So in rehab also uh, now people a lot of people using that uh, to to float now. Yeah? So that the, the in injured uh, athlete cases and float uh, floating reduce pain. Yeah? So that remember that. When athletes got injured, they always pain, 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 pain. So then, of course, they reduce the stress, and that has been shown that it is endorphin. So again, when you float, you actually secrete a lot of endorphin. So uh, you know that endorphin is, is a good hormone, it's a happy hormone. So that uh, you, you can see that this is a photo that uh, you know you can you can find on the internet. You can get it uh, everywhere. It's actually this uh, the tank. It, it, when people, you know, it's an Ibsen shot that actually you, you lying down, regardless of how heavy you are, you're still float. All right. So even even some of the time is actually got video, got music, and all that, so that athlete can use that to enhance their their skill performance and all that. So other than that, you can see that uh, this is the example, like very close, and actually all the athlete uh, as long as long the nose, the the mouth is actually face up. Uh, on top of the uh, fluid, then you are floating. So it's floating is kind of uh, easy. Everybody, everybody can float. Eh? And also um, the new invention that they are about the flotation tank, you have to understand uh, the flotation tank, the Epsom salts they use are very, very costly. Eh? In, in Malaysia, you know, one small pack, a uh, few hundred. So it's, it's very costly. No, no, not many people want to buy that and then the machine itself is like in Malaysia, uh, as I know now, it's about uh, Malaysia ringgit is about 1.2 million, one tank. So it's extremely expensive. Again, to maintain uh, the maintenance fees of this tank is very, very high as well because of the salt, because of the, you know, you, you need to filter, you need to change the filter, you need to a lot of maintenance costs as well. Right? So the moreover, the tank is only able to hit one athlete at one time. So when you do relaxation, you cannot put the tank so small, it's only accommodate one person, then you put a few people inside, cannot. Because when you do relaxation, even you are touching something, you don't feel relaxed as well. You're not secure. So that the tank is only accommodate one person at one time. All right? So that, that is the setback in terms of the... That's why right. as such, uh, to obtain the same effect of this relaxation technique or the methods, we invented the aqua. So uh, myself and all the teams are actually we, 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 we invented this aqua flotation method that it helped the athlete, especially the injured athlete, to gain the same benefit uh, provided uh, by the flotation tank. So I think similar to the float as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, the new invention is that the aqua flotation today we have been actually. Uh, same for copyright, same for inter uh, intellectual property and all that. Actually, nobody done that so that we actually obtain the uh, registration number by intellectual property and all that. Eh? So this, this is what we did. So you can see that uh, this guy is in front of you now. <laughs> this guy is just in front of you. So that it's all, uh, but we, we modified the flotation tank. We don't use uh, because the Ibsen salt is the density of the salt, that's why it makes people float. But this one is, is the clean water, is the water, you know, in, in the pool, swimming pool, so that the density is lesser compared to the Ibsen salt. So that what happened is I, I modified it, uh, all the subject is actually wearing 
in a life jacket. So they are floating actually. Yeah, definitely life jacket can, can make us float. Huh? So what happened is uh, this this is all the national athlete and um, working wood. Uh, the time we, when they finish the training. So after the training session, I, and then I always ask the coach, coach, give me one hour. So the coach said, okay, you take it. And then I'll bring them to the swimming pool. Would you know sailing? They, they need to put on their life jacket so that they no need to change any single thing. So they just jump to pool with their life jacket during training session. And then after that, they you know uh, the life jacket is actually you know they, they can float lah for them. So actually, this athlete is actually more enjoyable because after the hard training, they come to the pool, they sleep in the pool, and then uh, water is always in the evening, and uh, the, the still water is still a little bit of warm compared to normal because you know the heat carried out from the air option. So these are the things that they enjoy. And then with that, the aqua relaxation, this is the athlete that uh, I more focus on that. And these are the athlete that, and also uh, this is actually not the athlete actually. I'm, I'm using the same technique but I apply to this uh, uh, general population, but this is all these uh, in a corporate company staff and all that. So that I am doing that as well. And also what are the benefits that I can tell you at this moment of even though we know uh, you know the the benefit is similar to the first decision tank, but I can't tell you like because we, we can't carry we didn't carry any uh, benefit in terms of the, the further study yet. Uh, you know too many things for you to carry out the studies and all that I, I didn't if, if anyone I would like to invite if anyone been, you know, able to carry out the research in terms of this odd benefit, by all means, please. Yeah. So number one is actually elimination of the force of the gravity. Definitely, when you float, that means like you, you take away all the gravity. So body experience. So when a relaxation and expand expansions of the multi interarticulate space enable the better. Uh, that mean, means like when you are floating. There is no much of pressures and all that, no gravity too. That's why the blood flow is become better. Okay, so that that, that is the, the very important benefit. So again, uh, the release of endorphin is the wonderful because when you lie down, you relax, and then endorphin release more hormone and this kind of endorphin is actually so the system endorphin are the natural painkiller. So that if the athlete is injured they actually can reduce the pain and then they block the transmission of the pain at the sinusal level. So even the transmitter of the, the you know, attack, the, the, the pain is still lower. So endorphin is wonderful. So decrease the uh, marker, markedly the perceptions of pain and improve the frame of the mind uh, or the patient helping the break the vesicle uh, of the, uh, again because of the, you know, Vessels is become bigger so that everything is become smooth. They can go through, and then uh, there is no more pain, and then they, they don't feel that so depressed. It's actually tense, no no longer that. So uh, can you imagine that? So what are the take home messages today? Is actually uh, for you to apply this. Uh, by all means, huh, If you want to apply this uh, uh, aqua relaxation, please take and go and apply it as long you can enhance your performance as long you can enhance your relaxation uh they, they are wonders they are wonders yeah so relaxation skills are able to speed up the recovery process in um, especially in the injured athlete so i think nobody can say that it's not so ultimately go in the rehabilitation to help the athlete return to play as soon as possible so relaxation so they return to play as soon as possible. They need to recover as soon as possible so that they can play in, in the you know optimum level. So as such, the air quality relaxation technique will be another choice for them. So it's, it's not mean that this is the only one. As I mentioned, is uh, you know imagery maybe another one. You can use the cell talk, you can use the music, you can, but air quality relaxation technique is one of the options. And it's similar to the frozen tank technique, whichever have been proven. So that, please use that. With that, uh, I would like to say once again, thank you very much to the three universities to co-organize this uh, wonderful international um, webinar on sports medicine. And with that, I hand it over back to our beautiful uh, lady, 
for moderating this. All right. Wow. That was really, really a very energetic talk. There's no dull moments with you, Dr. Lim. Thank you. We really appreciate uh, the informative um, discussion. Uh, I am actually a physical education instructor, so I was really overwhelmed with everything that you have mentioned in your slides, and those are very fruitful and useful to me. And I know everybody would agree with me that it was indeed very timely right yeah. so thank you thank you so much for that doc and at this time oh, we're going to uh present uh allow me to read the citation of the certificate of recognition mm. to mm. our dear uh associate professor alim bunhue yeah. so here's the certificate of appreciation um <laughs> given to you by the International Association on Physical Education and Sports in collaboration with Batang, uh, Southern Luzon State University, College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, Batanga State University, JPLPC, Malvar Campus College of Teacher Education, Laguna State Poly uh, Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus College of Teacher Education, Certificate of Appreciation, uh, is given to Associate Professor Dr. Lim Boon Boy for importing his valuable insight and expertise as resource speaker during the international webinar on sports medicine. Signed by the Dean of College of Teacher Education from Southern Luzon State University, uh, that's uh, Dr. Maripi S. Magpantay. We also have the Dean of College of Teacher Education, Batangas State University, JPLPC Malbar Campus, Dr. Janeline P. Luwalhati. And we also have the Associate Dean of College of Teacher Education, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, Dr. Karen A. Manaik. And last but definitely not least, the Associate Professor Dr. Jolson M. Santos, our President of International Association of uh, Physical Education and Sports. We are indeed honored and privileged to have you today. Uh, Prof, yeah. thank you so much for the, those uh, very useful message to all of us sports enthusiasts. And we will definitely apply all those things <laughs> in the near future. All right? <laughs> Okay, so at this juncture, as what uh, Professor Lin Bun Hui mentioned earlier, he still has a very important class to attend, so yeah. let's spare him, okay? <laughs> but don't worry, um, uh, Prof, please expect questions. Uh, I know for sure there's a lot of questions, so we will just take note of it, and yeah. Dr. Jewelson will be the one to communicate with you, all right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're looking forward to have you again in the near future. Okay, Doc. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at this moment, let us proceed to our second speaker for today's webinar. So our second speaker is an associate professor of University of St. Uh, Malaysia and sports psychology lecturer at the Exercise in Sports Science School of Health Sciences, University Science Malaysia. Our very, very handsome, I must say, <laughs> I can see you there, Doc. Associate Professor Dr. Gary Kwan, we are very excited to have you this morning. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Um, can you make me the host to share my slide? Oh, brilliant. Definitely. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Jilson. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to see you. Uh, thank you, the organizers, for the invitations. The International Association of Physical Education and Sports um, in collaborations with even the Southern Luzon State Universities on this international webinar in sports medicine. So I'd um, like to share today on my favorite topics uh, on the power of music using a holistic and innovative methods in integrating music into health 
and medicine. So I hope that it will also be suitable for your team, which is the latest techniques and strategy in sports medicine. Okay, great to meet everyone. So let me begin. Um, so I come from University Science Malaysia. In fact, I just came back from my postdoc at the Brunel University in UK and currently as the research uh, officer for them as well. So I'm doing some research scholarly work in collaboration with Brunel University in London. So my specialty is using music therapy or psychophysiology and um, sports psychology in the applied setting works. Okay, so... Uh, let us go into a presentation. Before that, I also like to bring you uh, some greetings from the Asian South Pacific Association of Sports Psychology, uh, ASPAS, and also the Malaysian Sports Psychology uh, Association as well. So I uh, hope that um, if you like to know more about sports psychology, how we were able to collaborate into sports medicines, uh, do send us a text or also um, a Facebook messages and we were able to uh, collaborate and to do some works together as well. So um, with the team, latest techniques and strategy in sports medicine, everyone will wonder why music? Why is music so important in practice? So uh, before I start, I'd like to bring you an uh, important quote by Maria Von Trapp. She is a music therapist, and she said that music acts like a magic key to which the most tightly heart close opens. Okay, this is very important, whereby if we have the same music, we were able to communicate with we actually listen to the same thing, we will also able to uh, relate to each other. Okay, I'm sure you will now remember about the first good time whereby you have your candlelight dinners, the first time you even have a nice um, a dinner with your family or maybe you with your wife, okay? So this will be the first experience on the music, how you experience music and how you use music in life as well. Okay, before let's continue, uh, let me show you just a quick video on uh, music and how we use music. Wow. Okay, next one. The miracles happen. So we did not teach the dolphins how what they need to do, but they just do it naturally. Okay. 
It is amazing. Uh, next one, just a kick. So you can see that music's actually uh, very closely related to us. In fact, it is a part of our human natures whereby our body will respond naturally to our breath, our movement, and even our heartbeat. Okay, so when we use music, we, if we able to use it correctly, we were able to enhance our arousal control increase in the work output, better output, a lower the perceived exertions, meaning you can exercise longer, a lower the blood pressures, so this will be good in medications, a more efficient physiological functioning, and also increase the perceptions of flow. So that's why we like to use music. So we use music uh, for dance and fitness, uh, recently, a study by the Psychophysiology Effects of Music, a review study, talking about using music that it will enhance synchronization, work output, having more moods and uh, positive moods and effective states, uh, having positive enjoyment level, um, increase in physical activities, and it also reduce in the perceived exertion made meaning that they were able to exercise longer. We also use music for rehabilitations, whereby we use music and priming uh, to help in rehabilitations, whereby our neural connectivities to help our patients and also our client to able to walk and to um, move more when, when they are more relaxed and their motor skills will be enhanced as well. We also use music in applied sports psychology practices, whereby we use music for weightlifters, for fine motor skills, sports, for synchronizations, for movement, for exercise, and for warm up as well. We also use music for enhancing um, neural feedback uh, measurements, whereby we're able to feedback to the athletes, whereby they get more relaxed and they're able to get more into the zone, what we know as the flow states. So this is a diagram whereby we use music to help in synchronizing uh, running performance. So when we use the music to help them to remember uh, the music, when they run in performance in actual competitions, they will still able to remember the music to help them to reduce fatigue as well. By using music, we also can enhance our flow states, especially for relaxations, like uh, Dr. Lim just mentioned just now, talking about how we were able to add music into a practice to make our patients or our clients get more relaxed. So we use it with bowlers, with taekwondo, with different athletes as well, and even for throwers whereby we manage to get uh, some records. And also for tennis players in adding into biofeedback so that the music were able to feedback back to the client. So I do have also uh, orchestra, whereby I'm the conductors, whereby we use music for medical and health science students by using music to promote what we know as the health music therapy, music therapy or a sound therapy for a client and also patient in the hospital. Okay, so I'd like to submit to you that uh, music is for everyone. In fact, everyone listen to music. Music will allow uh, people to participate whereby they enjoy more uh, using music, listening to music um, in activities, in shopping, in doing uh, works as well for concentration tasks and even for personal expression. However, sometimes uh, there's barriers in using music as well, whereby 
we are thinking how we were able to use music more realistically. So why is it non effects whereby sometimes people might have unrealistic expectations? Uh, sometimes there's some reluctancy uh, between the elderly, adults, and sometimes a moody people might not like music as well. So we need to modify and also cater them differently as well. Um, this photo just shows that uh, 10 years ago, everyone just uh, like to warm up, pre-run, and then they just run, and then they go for a post-run finish. So um, that's their routine. But for now in 2021, uh, before you run, what will you do? You will definitely select your music, turn on your apps, turn on your phone, and also set your GPS, select your nicest music for running. Then you go running, listening to music, and take a selfie, and come back, and then you update your status into Facebook, Instagram, etc. Okay, so what does it mean? Music is actually part of our life now. So whether you want it or not, athletes use music. Uh, in your therapy, people use music. Uh, in hospital, people use music. Everywhere, people will use music. However, are they using music the right way or not the right way? Because if they are not using the right way, it will have detrimental effect as well. In fact, researchers have suggested that music can be carefully selected to match the requirement of activities and characteristics of both individuals and groups in order to produce significant impacts on performance enhancements and motivations in physical activity and sports. So that has been increasing evidence to suggest that the right music can lead to greater frequency greater intensity and durations of sports and exercise behavior, which could then lead to enhanced motivation in sports. Okay, so what is the benefit of using music? Basically, music enters the brain through the emotional regions, which include your temporal groups and also limbic system, the long-term memory, okay? So it tends to produce the frontal loop response, okay? Just go through. That influence the will, moral value, how the body reflects the reasoning power, okay? So this will actually, um, whatever music you listen, it's easily absorbed and stored in your long-term memory. So that's the problem whereby the Australian Music Therapy Association said that depending on type of music you use in sport, it can either influence the brain beneficially and or it can also influence the brain detrimentally as well. Okay, what does it mean? Meaning that if you use music the wrong way, it can also have detrimental effects. But if you use the music the right way, you have the beneficial effects for your brain. Wow, this is powerful. So how do we able to select the right type of music? Very simple. All you need to know the first basic thing, which is the five elements of music, which is number one, the melody of the music, which is the tune which the piece of the music is played. Uh, normally you hum, you sing, you whistle, the tune, okay? Uh, so our next one, number two will be melody. When we talk to melody, melody is the mood of the music. So the same music can be played very happily and the same music can be also played very sadly. The same music can be played very romantically and it also can be played very sad as well. Okay, so melody, harmony. The third one will be the rhythm. Rhythm is basically just the um, 
way the music is accented or combined with the tempo that makes the intensively move in time with it. So for example, the rhythm of four, one, two, three, four. Or if you want a dance music, normally will be come, coming from a three, four time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Da -dum -bum -da. Da -dum -bum -ba. So you are dancing with the music with the same rhythm. Okay. Next one, number four will be the tempo. Tempo is the speed of the music is played which normally measures on the beats per music, BPM. So the same music, we can play it very fast in, for heat training, and we can also play slow for relaxation as well. So you can see we can play with the tempo, and it also have different effects for your client as well. Finally, a very important um, element will be the dynamics which is the volume of the music is played. So the same music, if you play very loud, some people will get very headache, okay? And so if you play too soft, there's no effect. People could not listen and they could not hear it as well, okay? So the dynamic of the music is also very important. So if you need to consider the five elements, melody, harmony, rhythm, tempo, and dynamics. Okay, of course, beside the five elements, there's also other experience of music. For example, previous experience of listening to the music, maybe it prompts you to good experience or maybe um, not so good experience. Cultural also play an important factors, whereby the culture in um, Australia might be slightly different than Malaysia or Philippines. And that's why the music we learn or we play is slightly different, okay? Next one, are we using music for active participants or maybe passively? So passively, we just put it in the background whereby uh, the music is just to enhance. So basically, for example, you are exercising in the gym. So the music is just played in the background. It still helps to enhance about 8% of your exercise routine as well. Okay. And finally, we want to also consider the familiarity of the music. If you're familiar with the music, sometimes it gets a lot more better. And sometimes it also has bad experience as well. So sometimes for research, we will prefer using unfamiliar music. So to prompt any um, music, previous prior experience of the music. So next one, we want to consider the motivational qualities of music. How we were able to use music to stimulate motivations for the effects, okay? So uh, in order for us to get an effects on motivational qualities, you have to consider two factors, which is the internal factors and the external factors. Internal factors coming from the rhythmic response, the musicality of the person. So the person like or dislike music will definitely influence whether the therapy is successful or less successful, okay? Whether the person is more rhythmic inclined, like to listen, dance along with the music, definitely will have better effects, okay? For external factors, we will need to consider the cultural impact. For example, uh, other countries' music might not be so suitable for um, this uh, particular groups of people because of the cultural impact, okay? So this culture do not actually listen so much of this type of music like a rock and roll, okay? So sometimes this group of music might not be suitable for them. Next one will be an important factor, as I mentioned just now, which is the extra musical associations. So the association of music is important because sometimes we associate music with good experience and sometimes with bad experience as well. So we tend to 
reduce the bad experience of the music in our practices as well. Okay, so by considering the motivational qualities, we were able to have synchronized effects. For example, running, uh, we were able to run together with the bits. You enjoy running together. This will lead to dissociate from pain and uh, fatigues, then they were able to run further. And that is able to also improve in moods, getting more positive moods, happy moods, vegos, then they were able to exercise longer. And also it can control our arousal, whereby it can be high arousal or maybe relaxation as well. Both have different types of music. And finally, you can also use music for skill learning, whereby we can use music to teach uh, kids how to learn a new skill by just using the music rhythm, okay? So it's very simple by using the motivational quality to select the music. So that's why uh, Costas Kara Georges from Brunel University actually invented this um, music rating inventory tree known as Brunel Music Rating Inventory or Brooms, okay? So for example, to use this music is very easy. So this inventory is very easy, sorry. Um, you just need to use music accordingly to your activity. For example, I like to use music in rehabilitations. So the rhythm of the music would motivate me during rehabilitations. Uh, the style of the music will motivate me during rehabilitations. The melody, the theme of the music would motivate me during rehabilitation. So if we have 20 pieces of music and one or two pieces is strongly agree, most probably that music is suitable. Most probably. Of course, it's not 100%, but uh, if you want to confirm further, you can also use what we know as a psycho neuropsychophysiological measure, whereby we can see the EEG, the brainwave of um, the music when it stimulates and then if it's enhanced more alpha wave then it will be more creativities and or maybe enhanced more in beta wave it stimulates more relaxation so you can see that we were able to see their natural re uh, reactions from the psychophysiological measure as well so the example of some of the tracks we can use for uh, sports and exercise. So according to the work output or work component, most important thing, uh, you can just pay attention to the tempo. Okay. So for example, to do a mental preparations, use a slightly about 90 to 95 warm-up activity about 100 and if you are wanted to do some strength component so you can increase the tempo to 130 140 or maybe an endurance events or a hit training 150 it depends on the activity you want you can change around and pick around on the tempo okay so many people like to know what the Actually, Michael felt listen to help him won the 20, being the 28 times Olympians medalist. Okay, one of the most successful. So he's using music, telling that it's me. Uh, I'm yes, I'm me. I'm me. I'm there. I'm the best, okay? So I'm there to, to win and in order to um, outperform everyone, okay? So he used music to stimulate that to increase his confidence. Well, um, another one, uh, Joel Komalko, uh, he used music totally different. Use music just for relaxation. So use Japanese classical music in order to relax and to mental prepare for his match. Okay. So you can also find a lot of uh, study and publications on the use of music. Um, uh, you can just Google my name and also uh, 
find some literatures on music, you were able to uh, get a lot of uh, studies being conducted in using music for different activities. Firstly, we are using music for a pre-task. So what is mean is before an activity, you want to prepare your mind uh, like imagery, relaxation, meditations before a competition. So that is a pre-task music. So we use music um, on the um, measuring the elite shooters um, during imagery to see arousing or relaxing music is more suitable for uh, shooters, uh, elite shooters. You can see from this diagram, the Gavani scheme respond whereby unfamiliar relaxing music is more relaxing and familiar arousing music is more arousing and unfamiliar arousing music will be even the highest arousing, okay? So similarly, you can see it in the peripheral temperature as well, whereby unfamiliar, unfamiliar relaxing music will be the highest as well, okay? So in terms of using relaxing and arousing music on a fine motor scale, which is like dart throwing performance, dart throwing is considered fine motor um, activities. So again, we use unfamiliar relaxing and arousing music comparing this time with no music. And you can see that the uh, relaxing music is more relaxing, arousing music is more arousing. And by using no music is in the middle, it do not have much effects. So for the dart throwing to conduct uh, imagery training, you will find that unfamiliar relaxing music is more effective for them comparing to arousing music or even with no music. Okay, then we replicate it into a match and mismatch conditions whereby we have shooters and also weightlifters, professional elites weightlifters coming to us uh, by using music for imagery. And what we found is uh, fascinating whereby even weightlifters using unfamiliar relaxing music is better for them for pre-performance, pre-task music. Uh, and the same for shooters whereby they can use relaxing music for pre-task condition, okay? So maybe you might ask a question, does it the same types of music uh, have the same relaxation level in terms of cultural differences? As I mentioned, cultural also uh, important factors. So we have here whereby Westerners uh, use the classical music and also Malaysian use Malaysian classical and Westerner classical music. And you can see that uh, Westerner, they are more prefers their Westerner classical music and Malaysian also prefer their Malaysian classical music compared to Westerner music. And they are also more familiar with the music and it also get more relaxation. In terms of performance, we can also see that uh, Malaysia archers actually perform better um, with Malaysian music, the same like um, Westerner shooters who actually perform better with Westerner classical music. So that is for the pre-task music. What about in-task? In-task meaning that you are exercising with music. So in-task music can be divided into synchronous music, synchronizing the movement, and asynchronous music whereby it did not purposefully synchronize to the movement, okay? So our study actually shows that by using synchronized music or synchronous music on the psychophysiological parameters of running in hot and humid conditions whereby uh, in Malaysia, it's hot and humid, so we acclimatize the room into hot and humid conditions. Uh, then we want to synchronize the music for running. So, for example... So you can 
Okay, so what happened? Uh, by using synchronous music, you will find significantly higher in terms of time to exhaustions, meaning the athletes were able to run further and also less exhaustions. Okay, uh, we also conduct some in-depth experience um, on the runners and we found that they, the runners actually feels that the music pushed them further and the beat of the music actually leads their movement, which is synchronized effects that stimulates the sense of strike with the music instruction. Well, recently we also published, uh, it's still in press uh, together with our researchers in uh, UPM on the use of mindfulness acceptance commitments for Malaysian elite athletes. Also, we were able to use uh, for enhancing MAC approach as well, uh, mindfulness approach. So our uh, study in USM also used music um, to reduce uh, the shockwave um, extra corporals, whereby uh, when people are using shockwave, it's very painful. Uh, so by using supplementary of music into uh, their earphones to block out the sound, it able to lower their pain score, reduce in the anxiety, willingness to repeat the procedure increase and also lower the pulse rate and also less additional uh, anesthesia were given to the patient. So you can see that music's able to reduce pain and anxiety as well. What about finally, let's uh, discuss a little bit on using music for physical activity. I prepared a video. The recent COVID-19 pandemic has struck the world unpredictably and affected our very lives. Dan untuk itu, kerajaan memutuskan untuk uh, melaksanakan perintah having, uh, kawalan pergerakan. Do you miss the sunlight, the natural sound of birds chirping, and the cool breeze of fresh air from the morning jog? Hubspot has come up with an interactive online web-based videos developed with the sole purpose to help revitalize behavior and promote engagement in physical activities. With collaborators from more than 50 countries and regions, the videos are available online for free to be streamed or downloaded. You could watch and follow the movements in the video from more than 500 videos created from brain breakers from all over the world. Give your brain break, brain breaks, an innovative way of teaching physical activities during the MCO. So <clears throat> due to the uh, lockdown, so COVID-19, so many countries actually experienced lockdown. So we conducted a study on the mental health, anxiety and depressions <clears throat> among uh, 11 countries. And we found that these 11 countries actually have increased significantly in their mental health, depressions and anxiety among the adults population. So what we did is we find, uh, we use brain breaks to help to enhance physical activity at home. So if you want to know more about uh, brain breaks, you can find out articles whereby Bright Sports Physical Activity Investment That Works, how to implement brain breaks for the Malaysian primary school. So what is this objective of these innovations in sports? So basically we challenge orthodox whereby exercise not necessary just needs to conduct outdoor it can be also indoor with music we leverage uh, resources whereby only internet connection is required it's free no charges at all we harness trends whereby it's suitable for the entire family so brain breaks is suitable for kids for adults, for elderly, and even for types 2 diabetes patients and hypertension patients as well. 
And then we also understand the needs, which is this new contents keep on coming up. We have over 500 videos available for free. It enhances more motivations and also cultural specificity. Okay, so the study is actually uh, in collaborations with the United Nations 17 Sustainable Developmental Goals, focusing on number three, which is health and well being, and number four, quality education. So, what is Brain Breaks? So, you can see this is video based. Okay, so Brain Breaks is an interactive online web-based physical activity videos. It's available for free to help to revitalize student behavior by moving and engaging students cognitively in the context of health and has been specifically initially was uh, designed for classroom setting. So we also use now Brain Breaks in... Um, house setting and also in outside outdoor as well so we have 54 countries uh, including uh, philippines also joined to conduct brain breaks in the regions whereby the actions are simple repeatable with engaging students in moderate to vigorous physical activity so you can log into brain breaks and you can uh, access to over 500 internationally created brain breaks and it is partners with the global community health and the united nations um, 17 sustainable developmental goals so the benefits of using brain breaks is to recharge the brain to be ready to learn and to study uh, reducing bmi reducing absences and also empowering individuals to make healthier life choice changes, which is to exercise. So what happened is we did this study during the COVID-19 pandemic, whereby we get funding from the Research University Individual Grant. Uh, we have contacted the primary school children in Malaysia, whereby during the MCO, which is the Mobility Control Order in Malaysia, we have um, from May to November, we recorded 1,622 students to participate in this study, whereby they just need to exercise eight to 10 minutes using moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity. So to participate in this study, if you want to know more about Brain Breaks, you can also just register yourself, fill in some pre-test questionnaire, log into brainbreaks.com, then you can select over 500 videos available for free and then follow the movement and then debrief and just do the post-test questionnaire. So example uh, happening during this mobility control Jaya. order in Malaysia. So they are learning to balance, running and balance. So you can see they are enjoying and jumping. So this was It's really interesting. So you can see that um, Brain Break study has been published um, worldwide. In fact, in USM, we use a lot of uh, brain breaks for enhancing the motivations to exercise for type 2 diabetes, for school children to enhance their short-term memory, to enhance their uh, cognitive level, and to enhance their physical activity level as well. So one of these in innovations is basically the videos were downloaded over 12,000 videos were downloaded during this uh, Brain Breaks MCO period, which is a mobility control order in Malaysia. We have 54 countries joining together and we have just published uh, 11 publications from our Malaysian group as well. 
Okay. And recently, we just published one uh, with the Chinese school setting talking about brain breaks, uh, how to enhance the attitudes towards physical activity as well. And we also won an innovations uh, using brain breaks during the MCO periods. And we also have uh, teachers to give a positive testimony and feedbacks to us. FLV is very good. Promote friendship and leadership. And even the student um, talking about the Hello, programs. My name is Sari. I'm from uh, Sports Science yes. and Sports Science. Yes. So, so that's from our student. We also use music uh, more towards uh, special groups of uh, people as well, uh, populations. So uh, the special groups, people, where we teach them to use music to reduce their motor um, relaxations, and then their motor skill will be able to enhance as well. So we also use music for skill learning especially for slow, slow learner and autistic children. Uh, this also able to help them as well. Uh, to conclude, if we want to use with music for um, your populations, always remember that there's some personal and situations uh, variables whereby female exerciser will rate music as more important on the other hand, male exerciser pr will prefer some more pronounced bass in their music. <clears throat> okay, young exerciser about 16 to 25 years old will rate music as more important. Well, young exercisers will even prefer current music, dance music, and they often play louder. On the other hand, older exerciser will prefer quieter or older music. And then if you're working with exercise, especially in the evening, like current situation in Malaysia, we are having a fasting, a fasting months whereby a Ramadan. So um, athletes are training in the evening. We will use a faster tempo and music for them as well. Okay, so this is the... Music is used together with the Malaysian Paralympic. Okay, so to summary, um, when we use music, always remember the motivational qualities, which is the internal and the external, coming from cultural preferences, familiarity, relaxing or arousing of the music, the purpose of the music, you can use uh, BMRI, Brunel Music Rating Inventory number three, for rating the music and also psychophysiological measure to measure the music is whether it's suitable or not suitable for your participant. So to conclude, we do have a theoretical frameworks provide a foundation for empirical works and practical applications of using music in these new norms, okay? There's also importance to take into account on the individual's differences, the task and situation when you are selecting music. However, the mechanism underlying the benefits of music still require more further investigation. And that's why we always open for collaborations so if you like to collaborate with me to use music, um, using music in medical settings, in sports, um, please contact me. Then we will able to do some collaborative research as well. So if you want to know more about um, these presentations, you can also find in our latest publications in a book chapters, which is a music in sports from conceptual underpinning to applications. Okay, so this will be uh, open textbooks, which is available. So some references, and also like to acknowledge my team in USM, whereby my hardworking student, they really work very hard in order for us to continuously produce a good manuscript and publications for the public as well. 
So I'd like to finally acknowledge my gurus, my teachers, which is uh, Professor Kara Georges, Professor Peter Terry, P Professor Tony Morris, and Professor Jolly Roy. With that, I'd like to end with a quote, which is vision without action is merely a dream, just a dream. But vision without if, but action without vision, you are doing many things, but you do not have vision. It is just doing things, passes the time. What we need is vision together with action. You can change the world. And that's why I think it really fits to this conference team, whereby we hope that we can uh, collaborate more and also generate more quality research whereby we have visions and we have actions together, we were able to make sports medicine a success. With that, I will end my presentation with thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. And pass back to you, uh, Prof. Mary. All right. Thank you so much, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Gary Kwan. It was indeed very fruitful and beneficial to everyone, especially to all sports enthusiasts. Me personally, I am very excited to apply music in my coaching session with my swimming athletes. And I haven't tried that. So I am really excited. And I will definitely get in touch with you, Doc. <laughs> with the results. So without further ado, we would like to give you the certificate of appreciation. This is presented to us by the International Association on Physical Education and Sports in collaboration with Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar Campus College of Teacher Education, Southern Luzon State University College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, Laguna State Polynet, uh, Polytechnic, University Los Banos Campus College of Teacher Education. Certificate of Appreciation is hereby given to Associate Professor Dr. Gary Kwan for importing his valuable insights and expertise as resource speaker during the international webinar on sports medicine. Signed by the Dean of College of Teacher Education, Southern Luzon State University, Dr. Marife S. Magpantai, and we also have Dean of College of Teacher Education, Batanga State University, JLPLC, Malvar Campus, Dr. Janeline P. Luwalhati, and signed by the Associate Dean, College of Teacher Education, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, Dr. Karen A. Manai, and also our ever supportive president of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Associate Professor Dr. Jillson M. Sandbus. From the bottom of our heart, we thank you so much, Associate Professor Dr. Gary Kwan, and we wish to have you again <laughs> in the yeah. near future, Doc. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And I just want you to know that there's a lot of uh, feedback in our YouTube as we speak right now. They wow. are all thankful to your fruitful uh, speech earlier or your topic was very useful for all Thank of you. us listening. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Doc. All right, so this time, I know all of us are overwhelmed already with all the things that we've learned, but hey, stay put because we still have our last but definitely not the least speaker for today. We have the former senior scientific officer of sports medicine, Sports Authority of India, of NS, NIS Patalia. We have no other than the expert, Dr. Madhavendra Vancharya. Doc, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Doc, very well. Uh, can I share the screen? Definitely. Can I start? Good morning, everybody. And I must thank International Association of Physical Education and Sports for giving me an opportunity to talk uh, in this webinar. So far, we have learned a lot about sports psychology, music therapy, but my topic 
is quite different from that, though psychology is a part of doping. I'll talk about doping. Now, doping is defined as the occurrence of a banned substance by water or any violation of the code of conduct. If you take any prohibited substance and you are caught, you will be stamped as you have taken unfair measures and you will be penalized. Even if you are caught in attempting to use a prohibited substance, you will be stamped as positive or as an offender. Even if you evade or you fail to submit your sample or you do not participate in the sample collection procedure, you will be considered as a positive case. Now, whereabouts failure, I will come to it later on. Normally, a, play, a registered player has to give a specific time when in 24 hours, in one hour in a day, he or she will be available for testing in a specific address. If he or she is not available, then he will be uh, stamped as a positive. If you tamper the sample, Tampering or attempted tampering. If you tamper the sample, nowadays it's very difficult to tamper the sample. Earlier, particularly the female athletes used to tamper the sample. They used to put their uh, distilled water in a condom and put it inside the vagina. And while uh, passing urine, they used to prick the condom with the nail, long nail, so that instead of giving urine, they used to give uh, a lot of distilled water. So they were evading the testing. But nowadays, in the collection procedure, there is a sea change. We have to expose from the mid chest to the knee, and we have to pass urine in front of a person called share from of the same sex. So this tampering is very difficult nowadays. Even if you are found to possess a prohibited substance or banned substance in your kit, then you are liable to be punished. Now, where from this dope originated? Dope is an alcoholic drink. It was used as a stimulant in ceremonial dances in southern part of Africa in way back in 18th century. Then they came. Uh, then came the word "dope." This is basically a Dutch word, but it came in American slang, where uh, robbers used to stupefy their victim by mixing tobacco with uh, datura stramonium, which caused hallucination, confusion, and uh, a bit sedation. And the dacoits used to loot the money. In 1889, the term dope was used in connection with preparation of a thick, viscous material uh, of opium for smoking. And during the 1890s, they extended to any narcotic stupefying agent, the term was called dope. But first in 1900, dope was defined as a preparation of drugs which was used to influence the performance of a race horse. That was in 1900. All of you know that Olympics started in Greece, in Athens. And there, in those ancient Olympics, 
athletes were found to take royal jelly to improve his performance. Royal jelly is nothing but a concentrated form of fruit extract. That means rich in carbohydrate. And in ancient Rome, in Colosseum, where the chariot race became a part of their culture, athletes or gladiators used to drink herbal infusion to strengthen them before chariot races. And in Second World War, a substance was used for the soldiers called amphetamine. And this amphetamine used to delay the onset of fatigue. You know, in those 1940s, the Second World War, the soldiers were fighting for a longer period. Uh, so their fatigue had to be delayed. And this amphetamine was used during those days. Then what happened in 1960s? In 1960s, uh, we saw a revolution in pharmacology globally. Many medicines or drugs were available. Basically, these drugs were used for medicinal purposes to treat a person. But they had got some side effects or some other effects, which some players started using for upliftment of their performance or increase their performance. And in 60s, probably this is the first uh, recorded case of death due to dope. Danish cyclist Jensen collapsed and died while participating in Tour de France. That's a grueling cycle race. All of you know, 100 kilometer race. And autopsy revealed presence of amphetamine along with nicotinal tartrate. That was in 1960. And thereafter, another two cyclists died in that same France, and all were using amphetamine. This amphetamine is notorious. I will come uh, later on because it is habit forming and it, it may cause death. Very unfortunate. Sports basically are recreational. Just to win laurel, you cannot compromise with your health. What do you want? A healthy, fruitful life. Not few meddled at the cost of our health and life. We want fair play. In 1968 Mexico Olympics, this was the first time doping taste was done. But in those days, only urine samples were collected and tested. In 2000, Sydney Olympics, first time blood samples were also collected. So the spectrum of testing increased. So it was not uh, possible for many athletes to evade or avoid <coughs> uh, this doping. Now look at the picture. We remember in 2016, we had our last Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. And see how many countries during those times were involved or involved with some sort of unfair means, that is doping. It's almost worldwide. Very unfortunate. Unfair means are being taken all over the world. This is a scenario in 2016, uh, Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Now, after that, the in evolution of doping, one agency was formed that is called WADA, World Anti-Doping Agency. It was formed in 1999, 10th November. What was the necessity of forming this kind of agency? Prior to that, 
there was not any legal sanction so it is very difficult to penalize and bring all sports under one umbrella throughout the world now in formation of wada all the countries their government are signatories so this has got some legal authority uh, to take action against the unfair means and world anti doping code was first adopted in 2003 came into effect in 2004 and this year uh, it's reviewed time to time the code is reviewed considering the present scenario this is the last revision was made in 2021 now what are the functions of wada first and foremost monitoring of the code compliance things <coughs> the research scientific research and publishing annual list of prohibited substances now wada every year publishes a list of banned substances and methods which comes into effect from 1st january next year so 2021 ban list is effective from 1st january 2021 and the list is available in wada website also there are different laboratories which test the urine samples and blood samples throughout the world their accreditation validation of the laboratory where it is uh, maintaining the standard or not and where they are, they are forming the methods or not qv i will come to it later on therapeutic use exemption preparation of athletes biological passport coordination regarding anti doping and development throughout the world about anti doping process education is very important part of wada awareness program many athletes still they're not aware what to do accidentally they sometimes consume certain things if they are not aware of the rules then uh, they are liable to consume some banned substances and they will be penalized so education or awareness program is very very important cooperation with law enforcing agencies and others so wada has published a huge list of prohibited substances substances are classified as s1 s2 etc and there are certain methods they are classified as uh, m1 m2 m3 etc but these all lists are available in the wada website i will not go in details but a few highlight a few s1 is anabolic agents this is the most popular doping agent it is used these anabolic agents increase the muscle burn muscle strength <clears throat> so that certain sports or games they get extra advantage of that like sprinters in athlete all through events boxers wrestlers and some others they try to use stanozolol you probably remember the name was associated with ben johnson the famous printer but these all medicinal products have got good number of side effects i will come to later uh, it later on and one of the in the introductory lectures dr kishor mukhopadhyay mentioned one day joiner karsi she died at a very early age or flow jo Yeah, uh, died very early age. Nobody knows what they have taken, but young athletes, international athletes, losing their life at an 
early age is unfortunate. <clears throat> then peptide hormones, they are also banned. Erythropoietin is a substance which is not naturally occurring in our kidneys and naturally secreted. Sometimes it is used to increase the RBC count, particularly people suffering with renal disease. But some athletes were utilizing these effects to increase the red blood cell count in the blood so that their RBC count will increase. As you all know that hemoglobin carries oxygen, so oxygen carrying capacity will increase and they will get certain advantage in endurance activity. But this had got some harmful effect. These are banned substances. <coughs> The chorionic gonadotropin, uh, corticotropin, these are also banned substances. Growth hormone, sometimes used in certain uh, hormonal deficiencies, but since it has got some anabolic effect, some of the athletes started using it. Now these beta-2 agonists, these are basically bronchodilators. They are normally used in bronchial asthma and some other cases. They have the property of dilating the bronchioles so that air entry is enhanced. This is a basically a medicinal use, but this has got to aspect, some anabolic aspects is, uh, effect is there and also by dilating the bronchioles they enhance the oxygen intake. So certain athletes thought they will get certain extra advantage by using it. These things are banned except salbutamol formotereol and salmetrol, these can be used by the inhal inhalation method only and they are dose related. <clears throat> you cannot go beyond these dose in a 24 hours. Certain hormone and metabolic modulators, they are also banned substances. Insulin is quite common, commonly used in type 1 diabetes, but insulin has got uh, some anabolic effects and this is also banned. And you remember meldonium, it was being used by Steffi Grubb and Steffi Grubb was penalized for two years. So these are substances which are banned. Now diuretic other substances in medicine this is used to increase the quantity and flow of urine in certain cases uh, in kidney disorders in some heart conditions like congestive cardiac failure, high blood pressure they are used but they are being misused by certain athletes for two purposes one in weight category events sudden because if you take uh, any diuretic you will lose water very quickly from the body along with electrolytes if you lose water your weight will decrease so in weight category events if they have to reduce weight very quickly they were using these diuretics not only that it was being used also as a masking agent masking agent why because it will dilute the urine. If it dilutes the urine, then chance of being caught 
by that specific substance is lessened. So these things are also bad. <clears throat> now there are certain methods. Earlier blood doping was done, but it's very cumbersome and no technical experts are required. For example, if one has to participate after six weeks in an endurance event, his one or two unit of blood will be withdrawn six weeks before, stored in the blood bank, and he will be transfused just before the competition, so that his again RBC count increases or hemoglobin increases, his oxygen carrying capacity increases, so he has got better endurance. But nowadays it's not being used at all because number one it has got certain uh, transfusion reaction and you need battery of experts uh, to do this so nobody is using these uh, nowadays now chemical and physical manipulation if you are tampering or are attempting to tamper either physical or chemical now i know one case immediately after winning an athletic event the person went to the toilet and his team doctor introduced a catheter inside his bladder it was drained out and put some uh, distilled water and then the guy smartly gone to the doping station and submitted his urine or given his urine sample for testing Nowadays you cannot do it. It was done in very early days, uh, 30 years back. Nowadays you cannot do it because the moment you are notified, one marshal will follow you. You cannot go anywhere. You have to report to the doping station. And while you pass urine, you have to do it in front of a chevron. So you cannot tamper like that. Still tampering by any method, it's banned. Even if you take IV infusion without medical reasons, and if it is more than 50 milliliter, it is bad. Though it's very early to say about gene doping, but still it's banned because advance of technology, in near future we may find that uh, genetic doping may be taking place so it is also banned. Now, those substances which I have so far mentioned is banned in and out of competition. Now come to the group which is banned for only during competition. These are basically stimulants and these stimulants are available in many common cold medicines commonly used over the counter cough syrups these uh, materials are available narcotics nowadays nobody uses for enhancers enhancement of performance but earlier particularly morphine and their derivatives were used particularly lifters boxes those who have chronic pain to alleviate or reduce the level of pain, they were being used. Nowadays, good number of analgesics available. Uh, so those things are not used nowadays. Even these cannabinoids, uh, this cannabis, hashish, marijuana, these are banned. Though it is not known whether uh, really they increase the performance or not. But since these are harmful products, they are banned. And glucocorticoids during uh, the competition, it is banned except for the local oil application like oil mill. <clears throat> now there are substances which are banned in particular sports. Like alcohol is banned in archery, automobile sports, etc. Alcohol concentration should be 0.1 gram per liter. If it is more than that, you are, uh, will be stamped as a ban. Now in archery, shooting and some other events, they were using beta blockers. Beta blockers are the medicines which is used in cardiovascular diseases, which reduces the heart rate, which reduces the body tremor, 
or tremor of the skeletal muscles. And these two properties were very helpful for shooters, like archers or shooters, because it increases their accuracy. So they started using it. It is banned in those particular sports. Now let us discuss about sanctions or punishment. Almost it's a nowadays a legal material because they can go for arbitration and all these things, legal document. In a nutshell, I am saying uh, that in most of the cases, first offense will uh, invite a ban for four years. Second offense will invite a ban for a lifetime. But there are some certain other cases where the punishment level may be for two years or less. But be careful about the rules and regulations. Punishment is there if you are found uh, positive with any of the prohibited methods or drugs or violation of any, any rule. Just few days back in our country, a wrestler was banned or penalized because he failed the whereabouts course. Whereabouts, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, the persons listed, mainly the elite category athletes, they are uh, impaneled or listed for whereabouts because they have to inform the either WADA or National Anti-Doping Organization or NADA in our country, National Anti-Doping Agency, their availability one hour in a day, that means one hour in 24 hours, the specific address and where there then that time representative WADA or NADA can go and can collect samples for testing. If they are not found <clears throat> at the station, they will be marked absent and after a certain period, they can be penalized. This fellow is penalized for four years. Already I have discussed this whereabouts information. Now, what happens if an athlete is retired and wants to come back to sports? Normally, the player must give a six months notice that I want to come back to the international level. It should be informed to international specific federation and also to national anti-doping agents. Why this method? Because if a player retires, and goes for illegal activity or anti-doping methods and come back and performs, he is taking unfair means. So at least six months he should give a notice and he should be tested. But exception can be made by WADA and relevant international federation considering the case there is a scope for uh, allowing the person before that. Now, let me discuss about certain adverse effects of doping. Good number of Medicinal substances are there in the world. We are fortunate. These are basically uh, meant for treating an ill or sick individual, but they are being used or misused by the athletes to get extra advantage over the others. So one should be aware of the what are the bad effects or adverse effects of banned substances. Like first I mentioned that anabolic steroid is very popular in that it has a good number of 
side effects like formation of acne, baldness, gynecomasia. Gynecomasia means formation of breast in the males. Decreased sperm production, testis size reduces. Even loss of libido is there. High blood pressure, hypercholesterolemia, even liver dysfunction in certain cases, liver cancer may occur. The aggression is increased. And in female, there may be hoarseness of voice and hirsutism. This means abnormal growth of hair may be there. Now, erythropoietin. As I have already mentioned, erythropoietin is a naturally occurring uh, hormone in the kidneys. But if it is used in excess, it will increase the red blood cells quantity, which means blood viscosity will increase. Blood viscosity, it increases, there is a chance of a formation of clots and chance of myocardial infarction or heart attack will increase. Human chorionic gonadotropin. It's a diabetogenic effect has got human may result in allergic reactions also. Now this tamoxifen is basically used in treating breast cancer. But it has got certain other effects. That's why uh, some of the sportsperson started using it. But it has got some notorious uh, dangerous effects of deep vein thrombosis or muscularization. Insulin is quite commonly used for type 1 diabetes, treating diabetes. But insulin has got some <clears throat> anabolic effect. That's why it is banned. But insulin if it is taken without uh, control, it may result in hypoglycemia. That means reduction of the blood glucose level. Even <clears throat> it may lead to hypoglycemic coma. Now insulin, I know a few sportsperson, the diabetic, but they participated. Like Pakistani cricketer Wasing Akram was uh, diabetic. He used to take insulin. A genuine player who requires insulin, they can take permission uh, through TVV or therapeutic use exemption. I will come to it later on. Now, these beta-2 agonists, the bronchodilators, as I have already mentioned, they can use, but it increases tachycardia, means increase in pulse rate. Palpitation may be there, increase in tremor may be there. Diuretics, as I have already mentioned, is <clears throat> used by the weight category events athlete to reduce weight or as a masking agent by some athletes. But if a normal person uses it, there is every possibility that electrolyte imbalance may occur, dehydration may occur, and from electrolyte imbalance and dehydration, a player may suffer from muscle cramp. Now, amphetamine is very notorious. Right from 1960s, actually the first reported death is from amphetamine. Tour de France, this 100 kilometer grueling cyclists, they died. Now this amphetamine basic property is they delay the onset of fatigue. If the fatigue, in onset of fatigue is delayed, you can work for a longer period of time. But <clears throat> this is quite notorious because it is habit forming and dose is requirement is increased day by day. Today I may get some benefit with one tablet. Tomorrow I will require two. After one week I may require three or four tablets. It increases and ultimately it may lead to cardiac problems and death. Apart from that, anxiety, insomnia, euphoria, headache, nausea, vomiting, these are the, even the psychosis is there, but the dreaded effect is addiction. Other stimulants, ephedrine, remember ephedrine, Maradona, he was caught with ephedrine, cocaine, 
these have got all bad effects like ephedrine can in, uh, induce hypertension heart <coughs> beat irregularity or arrhythmia can happen cocaine may uh, impair hand eye coordination after taking cocaine the person may be aggressive and may result in certain cardiac anomalies narcotics nowadays very rarely used in uh, sports but it's again habit forming but it causes a dreaded situation called respiratory depression and nausea vomiting is quite common marijuana hashish though used but it is never uh, established that they increases any performance but they have <coughs> adverse effects of impaired psychomotor skills and concentration power may be reduced <clears throat> and altered perception of time may be there blood doping is very notorious and dangerous because you need a battery of uh, experts and the blood bank to support you and you know in normal blood transfusion there may be transfusion reaction and increased blood viscosity may cause uh, thromboembolism and before that i want to highlight one few points because doping is individual responsibility individual responsibility means you cannot cannot say that i have taken certain uh, supplements food supplements and that happened it is your responsibility whether that supplement causes any bad substance or not it is your responsibility you cannot say my coach has given to me i have taken my doctor has given to me it is your primary responsibility of the athlete so be every time you must be prepared with a list of banned drugs unfortunately other than the sports doctors other doctors may not be aware of the banned substances other doctors may not be aware of the banned substances so just produce the list and say sir or ma'am i am an athlete so i should not be given this banned substances number 2 if a person has to be treated by a banned substance wada is not inhuman you can get treated no harm in it but <clears throat> you have to for, um, submit an application form called therapeutic use exemption form has to be filled up it has to be written for what purpose we have been given that medicine you have to produce the documents that you are suffering from that particular disease and it has to be established that no other medicines were there other than these banned substances we apply we apply for therapeutic use exemption to your national anti doping organization or wada or in big events like olympics asian games commonwealth games they have a separate uh, organization body or you can directly apply to the organizing committee for tvv and when you get tvv you must inform to the nado and wada that you got tvv for this particular medicine by this authority this is a planned treatment and what happens in emergency someone is suddenly ill and someone life has to be saved with certain medication how can you do that yes life is precious whatever medicine is required life saving medicine is required that can be given to an athlete and after that after the athlete recovers the tv form may be submitted and it will be cleared automatically because it was a life saving situation so banned substances is there 
therapy to use exemption is there because we want two things one is fair play <clears throat> everybody should uh, participate in a level field and healthy proper long life is expected for everybody we do not want any early death healthy life is more important than couple of medals so promote fair play thank you very much <clears throat> All right. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Manavendra. Uh, uh, we really like the session because as coaches, we have to be well educated about the do's and don'ts and also the substances, right? It's very important because innocence of the law excuses no one, of course. And as uh, uh, coaches and sports enthusiasts, we should be on top of it, right? So thank you, thank you for that. And with that said, um, we are now going to present the certificate of appreciation. So let me have that certificate for you. Uh, please um, allow me to read the citation. Certificate of appreciation is hereby given to Dr. Madhavindra Matacharya. Uh, for imparting his valuable insights and expertise um, as a resource speaker during the International Webinar on Sports Medicine organized by International Association of Physical Education in Sports in collaboration with Southern Lausanne State University College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, Batanga State University, JPLPC, Malvar College of Teacher Education, and Laguna State University, Los Banos Campus College of Teacher Education. Given this 12th day of April 2021 via Zoom platform. Signed by uh, the Dean of College of Teacher um, Education, Southern Luzon State University, Dr. Marife as a Magpantai, and also the Dean of College of Teacher Education of Batanga State University, we have Dr. Jenilyn P. Luwalhati, and the Associate Dean of College of Teacher Education, Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Banos Campus, Dr. Karen A. Manai, and last but not the least, the President of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Associate Professor, Dr. Jilson M. Santos. Um, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you, Dr. Manavendra Vacharya, for that very awesome presentation. Thank you so much, Doc. And for the uh, two welcome speakers back. as well. They're still with us uh, right now. Okay, <laughs> welcome back, sir. <laughs> so, uh, again, thank you. And I really appreciate our session today. I, I believe everybody would agree because we have mm -hmm. different experts. Right, we have different expertise from different fields or areas, and that actually um, makes this a uh, session very, very uh, fruitful and beneficial. So, with that said, of course, this session will never be possible without our active partner institution. So, without further ado, let me call in our very Active and iconic president of our IAPES, Associate Professor Dr. Jilson M. Santos, to award the certificate of recognition. Doc? Thank you, Professor uh, Mary Jane Pernitas. Am I edible? Am I edible? Yes. Okay. So the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated presents present this certificate of recognition to Southern Luzon State University College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, as an active partner institution during the conduct of the international webinar on sports medicine, given this 12th day of April, 2021 via Zoom platform. Signed by our country coordinator, Ms. Mary Jane F. Pernitas, country head and representative, Mr. Limuel O. Abelianida, and yours truly, Associate Professor Dr. Jewelson M. Santos. With, uh, we award this Certificate of Recognition to Sauter Luzon State University College of Teacher Education, Institute of, 
Institute of Human Kinetics. Uh, I would like to uh, award this and please accept uh, this certificate. Uh, Dr. Maripe Magpantay. Hello, ma'am. Yes, po. Please, uh, please do accept our uh, you, uh, certificate of uh, recognition. And thank you for this uh, opportunity for IAPS to be your partner. Thank you, Dr. Maripe Magpantay. Thank you din po for allowing us to be part on this uh, webinar. Thank you po. Thank you po, ma'am. Followed by Batanga State University JPLTC Malvar, College of Teacher Education and Extension Services Office. This certificate of recognition is awarded to Batanga State University. Please do accept uh, Dr. Uh, Jinaline Luwalhati this certificate of recognition and thank you for allowing us to be your uh, partner. Thank you so much, uh, IAPES, headed by Dr. J. Wilson Santos. We are grateful for uh, the certificate of recognition. Thank you so much. God bless. Next is the Laguna State Polytechnic University, Los Baños Campus, College of Teacher Education, Extension and Training Services. Please do accept our uh, civil gratitude with the, with the certificate of recognition. I hope that uh, you will accept this one. Dr. Karen uh, Maniig, thank you for allowing us to be your uh, partner. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. J. Wilson Santos. I gladly accept this certificate of recognition for and behalf of our university. And I look forward for more partnerships with IAPIS. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karen Maniig. Thank you, Dr. Jimeline Luwalhati and Dr. Uh, Maripe Magpantay. I hope this is not the end of our great partnership. I hope this will be the start of uh, great events and ventures uh, with the um, our, our uh, aim to uh, really uplift the field of physical education and sports. Ma uh, Professor MJ? Yes, thank you so much, um, Dr. Jewelson. And as your country coordinator, I am very, very happy and um, very overwhelmed to welcome everyone, especially the three big universities in our organization. We're looking forward to more webinars with you guys. So at this juncture, let us hear a word uh, from our concluding um, address speaker. We have Professor Sonia Abustan, the head of Sports Institute of Human Kinetics from Southern Luzon State University. Professor? Okay, thank you, Professor MJ. Okay, uh, a blessed afternoon to all of us. Accepting the challenges that pandemic brought to the educational system. I believe that collaborative academic endeavor like this is one of the solution to continue or upgrading the students, teachers, and administrators knowledge, expertise, and professional skills. Sports medicine is being concerned with the treatment of injuries resulting from the athletic activities involves prevention, management, rehabilitation of sports exercise, and physical activity related to injuries. Thus, this seminar of latest technique and strategies of sports medicine is, be, is truly big help, both to the athletes, coaches, including the teachers in sports of physical education. Since it provides them the new or the latest knowledge when uh, of first aid and injury prevention when young athletes are put at risk of injury. Uh, with this matter, I, on behalf of 
Zaudan Luzon State University and College of Teacher Education and Institute of Human Kinetics extend our grateful acknowledgement to the initiative of International Association of Physical Education and Sports and also to all our all speakers who share their expertise our ideas and knowledge to their to our topic in sports medicine and especially would like to thank to Dr. Jewelson M. Santos, the president of the AFS, to holding like these activities. The challenges in sports at present is indeed more intense due to COVID-19. However, let us not allow the, the pandemic to make us stagnant. Instead, let us equip ourselves with the indeed knowledge to improve better ourselves. After all, this is our strong will to learn more things that should matter. Uh, attending this virtual seminar like this is very helpful and beneficial to all of us. So thank you and more power to all. Mabuhay. All right. Thank you so much for that, Professor. Um, we really appreciate your words of wisdom. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. Pandemic should never stop sports. And that is why we have IAPS to the rescue, right? So we, we are looking forward for more webinars with you guys. Yes, and this time, yes. <laughs> this time we're going to hear a vote of thanks from the program chairperson of BPE program, Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar Campus. We have no other than Dr. TJ D. Panganiban. Doc? Am I audible, Ma'am MJ? Yes, very audible. Good day to our respected guests and participants. It's an honor for me to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this timely and fruitful webinar sessions. I, uh, on behalf of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, extends a warm vote of thanks to all delegates of this webinar for their presence and contribution to make this event successful. I extend my thanks to our distinguished resource speakers, Dr. Lim Boon Hui, Dr. Gary Kuan, and Dr. Manabendra Batsakarya. Thank you, sirs, for taking out time from your busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you for enlightening us, for inspiring, and for encouraging us with your words on this special day. Today's webinar was full of knowledge and interesting things. A special thanks to Dr. Kishore Multkopadjai, Professor Paisal Payas, Professor Emily Takada, Dr. Mary P.S. Magpantay, Dr. Janetlin Luwalhati, Dr. Karen Manaig, Professor Darwin O'Prain, Professor Sonia Bustan, and Professor Mary Jane Permites for providing the support to make the webinar successful. I also extend my gratitude to Batanga State University, JPL Pismal Bar, College of Teacher Education, Southern Luzon State University, College of Teacher Education, Institute of Human Kinetics, and Laguna State Polytechnic University, West Banyos Campus, College of Teacher Education for the collaboration which has attracted participants from different educational institutions. I must not forget to thank the organizing team of the IAPS for working hard to make this session successful. And of course, thank you Dr. G. Wilson Santos for the encouragement, leadership, for the guidance and opportunities. We are so blessed to have you. And also, our heartfelt thanks to our participants for your active participation. And lastly, thank you to our Mike Lord for making this possible despite the challenges brought by the pandemic. Once again, thank you everyone for making this a great success. Hope to see you again in the future events. God bless us. All right, thank you so much for that, Dr. TJ D. Panganiban, for that appreciation um, speech. We really appreciate as well your time uh, to all the three speakers. Thank you, thank you, Docs. We appreciate all the learnings that you have imparted to us in this session. 
Um, and that concludes our international webinar on sports medicine. Uh, let me just remind everyone, especially to those streaming live on YouTube, to please do not forget to sign in. Um, we already have the feedback link um, and the YouTube uh, live, so please fill it in and make sure to correct your spellings of your names and the email address so you will receive your e-certificates in a while. All right. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this is your hashtag super energetic host MJ uh, signing off now. Again, thank you and have a beautiful day ahead of you. See you in our future events. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.